All right. Well, we are live. Uh, Ken should be joining us here shortly. Um, tonight, we're going to have a discussion on turbos. All right. Well, we are live. Uh, Ken should be joining us here yeah. shortly. And um, part of the thing, what we're going to do is uh, Patrick, he has a Dick Landy car that is 318 small block Mopar powered with uh, a turbo. And Ken, he plays around with a lot of turbo stuff. So I really don't have any clue on turbocharging. I know enough to be dangerous, but I would probably throw a rod or explode a car or get kicked out of wherever I was trying to drag race in. Ari, okay. how you doing, buddy? I've not gotten kicked out yet, but I've blown up lots of parts. <laughs> there, there's Dr. Art and Ari. So we'll, uh, I tell you what, Patrick, what we'll do, since you are the Mopar side of turbocharging, um, let's just kick it off and just kind of explain what you got going on with your turbo build. Well, my setup's really pretty simple. Um, it uses, uh, I've got a 318 Magnum in there because that's what I had freebie available to me. And it uses uh, Magnum manifolds flip side to side. So they both come out forward. And the turbo is on the passenger side up about where normally where the alternator would go. But Alan, with the, uh, hi. Hey, Ken. But with the uh, um, Magnum setup, it moves the alternator up enough that I didn't have to move it. So I'm just bolted right onto the head, the passenger head, uh, hanging the turbo off there, which is a GT45, which weighs like 45 pounds or 48 pounds or something crazy like that. It's crazy heavy. And uh, I have the driver's side just crosses over un kind of underneath and in, in front of the balancer and pulley and the serpentine setup and comes on forward. Uh, I said the biggest thing that I had to do was move the tensioner from the passenger side over to the driver's side, which I think you buzz about a inch and a half off of that to shorten it up and oblong one hole and it bolts right to the driver's side head. Reclock it with a, with a drill. And it, it was, like I said, it wasn't a big deal. Well, I mean, you know, everything I've seen, if you, if you guys haven't seen anything that Patrick's done, go out to mostly old parts and rust, check out his channel. Um, I, the video he shows recently, he always says, that's oh, it's slow. It's slow. It is slow. I it's like that, it, PSI. That sounds like a jet ready to take off. I mean, absolute jet ready to take off. It's I, so I, cool. I got I to put a camera in and have the wife's face because I never yep. looked over, but I know she was sitting there the whole time going, yep. you know, because <laughs> she's usually so, screaming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I've taken my, my son for some rides like that. My dad's car. And, uh, it's a lot of fun. So, um, I see a lot of people are starting to join us. Uh, welcome, everybody. Henry's Hot Rod Garage, Unfinished Project, Dart Sport, Nathan's Mopar Garage. I see Big Mike in the Hoopty Barn. He's got a really cool 51 Cornet. Tom Muse has been joining us. And uh, Ari. Ari is actually one of the moderators. Ari does such a great job everywhere with that. Um, if you haven't seen, go check out his channel. And anybody in here, go check them out. There's a lot of no-name nationals contenders in here. And I'm trying new things. Cousin Cletus, hey, how's it going? Um, so what I'm trying to do is a little bit different of a format. Um, coming in here every week, I'm going to try to do it if time allows. Obviously, in between some scheduling stuff right now with the cars, it's raining here in Illinois. So I figured, you know what, let's do a live. And one thing that intrigues me is these two guys here, Ken from Tall Garage and Patrick from Mostly Old Parts and Rust. Um, these are the turbo guys. I don't know a whole lot about them. So I'm going to let these guys have the turbo discussion for about the first hour. And then I'll throw the stream yard in there and let everybody just have at it as usual. Um, automotive carnage. There's another cool guy. He's from Australia. Go check him out. Um, talking to him on trying to get some cool stuff over here to the States once, uh, stuff's able to go. So let's have this turbo talk. Ken from Tall Garage is building an LS head 300 straight six Ford. It is absolutely wild. It's crazy. But he also knows a thing about a turbo or two. So, Ken, go ahead and explain your build that now that Patrick's kind of discussed his, and we'll start uh, we'll start getting them questions answered. All right. Well, I'm happy I, I'm not late to the whole shebang. Um, my build's a lot like Patrick's. I mean, I use the same turbo, the, the GT45. It's uh, a very budget or into turbo you can get them on ebay super cheap and uh for anybody doing you know a turbo build for the first time that's definitely the way i suggest to go um 
But yeah, I got a, it's an LS4, originally out of a front wheel drive car. What do you got there, Patrick? Uh, 7875 billet wheel. 7875 is what I would go to at, yes, that, that is like the upgrade. That is the, the every man turbo. Uh, it spools faster than the GT45. It makes more boost at a given RPM than the GT45. It's just the, it's all around better. But yeah, so it's it's an LS4. It's originally in a front wheel drive car, and I stuffed it down in a little Ford Ranger because I was told that I couldn't. And I just followed the basic sloppy mechanics way of bolting a turbo to an LS. I built my own uh, turbo log manifold for the turbo out of a uh, stock uh, manifold off the LS. Uh, GM in their infinite wisdom, they made them out of some alloy. That is almost steel, so it's basically a cast steel. It welds super easy, and you, you know you don't have to worry about it cracking or whatnot. And uh, yeah, sloppy stage two cam, which is like the the go to budget turbo cam. It sounds great. It you know performs really well. And uh, I didn't go with uh, an ECU like Patrick. I could have, but I got a Terminator X from Holly. Uh, again, great for how much it costs, but anybody just jumping in first, I would suggest using the stock ECU. People have went very fast in the stock ECU. But other than that, it, it's pretty basic. Uh, it's going to get tuned eventually. I, I've gotten it to run. That's about as much as I know about tuning. I got it to run and cold start and idle, but I'm afraid that I'll blow it up once I get it into boost if I don't have some way to dyno tune it. So that's the plan coming up. Um, there's not too much to say. It's a five speed uh, out of a Colorado, the AR5. They're good to like 700 horsepower before they start breaking third gear. Uh, it's going to have an 8.8 .8 rear end. I'm expecting it to weigh like 2,600 pounds and it should just fly. So if you guys look, that's, by the way, go check out Ken's stuff and Patrick's stuff. He has got a lot of really neat, they both got a lot of neat stuff going on. I'm having some stream yard issues right now, but for the comment that's up right now, um, JB's little shop, he's building a two eight Chevy. Absolutely cool. I believe he's from Texas. Texas is a great state. Best barbecue in the whole entire United States. So anybody from Kansas city that I offended, I'm sorry, but I'm not. So with that, I'm here for the turbo info. Anything on superchargers, or do they work basically the same way? I'll let you two guys on the forced induction expertise explain that. So I got a lot to say on this, but I'll let Patrick go first. I want to hear what he, his take. Well, I think they're similar, but the, the biggest thing to know about the difference between superchargers and turbochargers, turbochargers, if they're sized properly at low engine RPM, can generate a ton of boost. Um, that can be good and that can be bad. Superchargers always have a rising boost curve. So the more RPM you get, since it's since it's you know crank driven, the faster it spins the supercharger, and it makes maybe more ultimate power. It all depends. I mean, it all depends on sizing at that point. Um, I think I think uh, superchargers actually generate more heat, in my opinion. Um, but E85 fixes a lot of different things. So, thanks, Buff. By the way. Um, I'm not, I'm not trying to interrupt you guys, but there's a couple of things I wanted to say, Travis Mopar garage. Um, he helped me out really big on something you guys will see tomorrow. So I absolutely appreciate that. If you're a Dodge guy, you know what? Screw it. If you are a drag racing car guy, go check him out. He's got a lot of cool truck stuff going on with that. I'll hand it back to you guys to hash this super. All right. Up. So I'm going to key this to JB because JB, you know, he messes with the little 2.8s. And I have a little bit of experience with 2.8s. My first truck was an S10. It had a 2.8. But the 2.8 is actually a great platform to supercharge. And the reason is, is the superchargers that make the amount of air 2.8 can use are super budget oriented. Okay. The, the GM and Ford both used the uh, M90 supercharger. So you can find them on... Uh, lots and lots of gm cars uh i'm trying to think like right, right now basically anything 3800 series also came with a supercharger if it was in, in a gm platform and then ford they put them in their uh supercharged turbo or super coupes or whatever they were but 
they're not very big turbos. You can get them for less than a hundred bucks or uh, superchargers. You can get them for less than a hundred bucks on marketplace and they make enough air that they, that a uh, 2.8 would just love it. They wouldn't run out like anytime soon. And it give, cause superchargers make more low end grunt because you have boost immediately. So for a 2.8, that that would just make that thing scream if it stays together. So two of them would work really well on a, a 5.6 liter? See, okay, so there's a couple guys on YouTube, uh, at least yeah, two that I know of, who have t who have built intake manifolds and put two of these, like I said, they're, they're cheap, uh, M90 superchargers on a V8. And like, will it, won't it work? I don't know, but... It's it, it's cool. Nevertheless, what they're doing now, there, there used to be a budget way to get uh, an M one one two, an M one uh, eleven or one twelve supercharger. There used to be a budget way to get them on eBay. They got flooded. I mean, absolutely flooded with superchargers that went on the um, what were they? Uh, they're in the Cadillacs, Patrick. They're really crappy motors with the starters in the valley. Are you talking about uh, the North Star? Yes. They were Nerf Star superchargers. I tried to forget about those. Yeah, and they were, I mean, they were, I think, 150 bucks got you a brand new, never bolted to an engine Nerf Star supercharger. And then somebody came out and made an adapter plate to put them to LS, and then the price went to like $500. So okay. M90s are the only budget way, but like for JB in particular, would just, it would make a 2.8 run like, like no one's business. Yeah, so I would just I would just grab my calculator quick, and I took two point eight, took it times so, two, and so uh, William Sanders sense. does make a good point. And JB, I'm sorry, Nashville, I thought it was Texas. That's my bad. Uh, superchargers also take power to make power. That is yep. true. Turbos do not. Turbos true. spool off of obviously exhaust. Um, best way to do that, from what I know, the little I do know about turbos, you know, intercooled. Um, nice thing about supercharger is it does not produce that heat like that, and it's pretty much instantaneous. I know it's today's super, turbo super, technology. Superchargers make they make a lot of heat. Yeah, almost like, all of them have some kind of intercooler built yeah. on the supercharger. So, it's like honestly, I don't know why. Like boomers especially irritate me on the whole. They want to bolt soup. They want to bolt six six. Uh, I forget what they are the 642 or whatever the big the big truck supercharger. They want to bolt them on everything. And it's just like put a, tur Six, put a turbo on it. Yep. Um, we see we got Destroyer in the house. He is wishing every happy Cinco de Drinco, y'all. So if you guys partake in the adult beverages, have one for oh, Destroyer. Man, I left my adult beverage. I've been on I've been on ibuprofen most of the week. I hurt tore I, my shoulder this weekend, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so that's that's pretty good with that whole turbo and all that. And in the two eight, I was I was actually talking to Ken this week about your channel, JB, and we were talking about the two eight builds. And one of the most durable trucks ever. A friend of mine had a, a two eight Chevy when I when I got my license, he got his license. So that'd been ninety four, ninety five, and I, it was like an eighty three. And that truck went through hell and back and never skipped a beat. Yeah, this is six. The 671 blowers, like, they're – put a turbo on it, guys. Sell them for the outrageous amount of money you can get for them and go buy you a $150 eBay turbo and go really fast. Like, yes. that's, that's my opinion. The, the, that's the, like the, opinion. the polished 671 that just sold for a small block Mopar here recently, you know, with an intake – with the correct intake manifold and the blower and some of the pulleys that you needed. No carburetors or anything yeah. like that. It was three grand. Yeah. Yeah. The opinions expressed here are my opinions and they don't reflect Jeff and Patrick, but yeah, stop messing with, with them. They're not worth it. I don't care how cool they look. You know, what's really cool going, you know, eight second past in the quarter mile down the track. That's cool. So, okay. <laughs> I agree. And, you know, I, I think everyone's got their opinions on superchargers, turbochargers, nitrous oxide, naturally aspirated gasoline, race fuel, E85, nitromethane, hydrazine, Whatever, it all makes power. I, um, I think it's fun. I, I like, I do like the sound of those turbo cars. Um, I, I preferably am just a big cam, lots of cubic inches, a couple of carburetors, lots of compression. Just put the hammer down and see what the hell happens. Um, so yeah, um, Travis here, 
Um, I'm going to have him on to talk about naturally aspirated power, how to make that. I'm rolling off the idea to do a twin turbo 331 for Mighty Mouse. So he's got this little truck he just got, and it's stuffed with a small block Ford. And 331. Yeah, it's a little D50. And a 331 Ford motor um, twin turbo would just be in a whole lot of fun with that. Um, so here's a question for both of you guys, because I know JB said he's soaking it up and all that. The one thing I kind of want to ask each of you, and you guys can debate it. Um, when you guys decided to do these turbo builds, what was your biggest failure at first learning curve slash, oh shit, I shouldn't have done this, but I'm going to keep going. So I got to get it right. I'll let you go first on this one, Ken. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. So th this is more of a general build fail. Like, this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the turbo itself. But this is the biggest fail. And I've never told anybody. All right. And I wasn't planning on it. But here we go. So I used an LS4. Okay. LS4 is not the thing I should have used. But I had it. I used it. I bought an aftermarket oil pan. All good so far. The oil pan did fit, you know. Yeah, it came with uh, it came with baffles and it was great and the oil pan fit. I had to modify. I had to modify the windage tray. Okay. Ah, don't go there. <laughs> and the LS4 windage tray that came stock and I wouldn't work, so I pulled one out of a 5.3 truck engine and I modified that and I bolted it in. Well, when I got it all put together, bolted in the truck with everything on it, transmission, it's all bolted in. Come to find out, the LS4 had the dipstick on the opposite side of the block. I was like, okay, I ain't too worried about this. Until I went to put the dipstick in, I realized the windage tray blocked the hole. Now, I didn't want to pull the whole motor out. I had it filled with oil, all the fluids. I'm like, what am I going to do? I need to get my dipstick in, right? So in the middle of the night when no one was watching, I got a big drill bit and I drilled straight through the fuck, <laughs> drilled straight through that windage tray into the oil pan, nice and clear and stir, stuck that dipstick in, and never worried about it again. <laughs> so I, I got some good chunks of metal floating in there. I need to get out at some yeah. point, but that's what the oil filter's for. That that's what I said. Like they'll get chewed up in the oil pump. It'll be fine. Like. Just real quick with this, guys, I am across the banner. Anybody's joined about the first hour is just going to be these two guys. Then I will uh, I'll end up throwing the StreamYard link in there for him. But join. I would be responding to some of these comments. But I for some reason, StreamYard is being um, just a little bit not liking me right now. So it's not even letting me type comments. So sorry if I'm not responding to anybody. Um, but yeah, I'm able to display these things. So, Patrick. I've talked to you about this, like, how did you get this right? How did you figure it out? All that type of stuff. So what happened at first? With there, there is a ton of trial and error, and it's mostly error. <laughs> the, I would say the biggest thing that I've seen that a lot of people uh, have problems with, and I know I have a problem, have problems with it, but I just added more uh, wastegates to take care of the problem, is a thing called wastegate priority. Um, as the exhaust comes out, and does its first bends, it really should be a straight shot, right straight to the wastegate. The wastegate should have the direct line right from the manifold and, and should be straight in line before there's any bends or anything. Um, I don't have that. And that's why I've got two 40, 44 millimeter wastegates on my setup. Nice. But that's what I had to do to make it work. Um, the you were, having, you were having booth creep problems, weren't you? I was having incredible boost creep problems. I mean, when I say yeah. incredible boost creep, I had six PSI springs in it and I was getting, I, well, I was, I was burying the three and a half or the two and a half bar map at 21 PSI. Jeez. So real, real, real quick, boost. real quick at that. And I'm going to have Travis hop in here after, you know, right away after our hour of turbo talk, but JB Travis says he had a two eight that was built in a square body blazer that went 12 thirties. That's moving. So we're going to have to hear moving. about that. Absolutely. And, if, and the thing is, Travis is a truck guy. And if you've ever seen his channel, Travis and Mopar Garage, go check it out. The guy knows how to get trucks to move. I'm actually going to race him at the No Name Nationals. And um, I'm bringing a whole lot of cubic inches. 
extremely low gears and uh, everything I got to even, you know, try to tackle that what's going on. So, yeah. And uh, Destroyer and a guy I am too. Um, for me, it's more of like somewhat budget and I've had a lot of uh, like these guys know their stuff when it comes to forced induction. Maybe I'll have to actually take notes next time. I'll be a participant in class. So somebody asked me what what are compression? What's your what's your compression on your motor, Patrick? Eight three. And, it, and that's not that's not guesstimated. That is that I did measure it. Really, that's low. Yes, the the the, the Magnum engines are supposed to be nine and a half to one. They are. Yeah. Nine. I think yeah, the deck my, height the deck height is like sixty over on the block. Like I would have to double check, but I'm pretty sure mine's eleven to one. Oh yeah, I could believe that. Now, how did you take care of since yours was a yours was a front wheel drive? Does that AT, AX5 uh, bolt right up to that bell housing pattern, or did you have to drill yeah. a block then? No. So, so it, what, what do you got, Jeff? Real quick, for anybody out there, Turbo, another guy to go check out on turbos, JB, um, um, Doctor Art Hot Rod Rehab. Yeah, hey, Doctor Art has a good question, so I, I want to touch base on that. Now to talk about the transmission, how do you get twenty one psi of a GT forty five? You know what? I had the same question because I've now I've yet to get mine on the dyno, so I honestly I don't know. Okay, I, I, Patrick is way more knowledgeable on some of the things than I am. That's that's for sure. But I've heard that GT forty five will darn near just top out at fifteen psi. Like that's what it will make, and it won't make no more. Man, I've got data logs that say different. <laughs> okay, see, so that's good to know because I've I, I was told, and I've heard they just run out of air at 15 psi. No, but, I, I drive the the video I had that was at 12, 12 and 13. So depends on what gear it's in. It, it yeah it makes a little bit different, loads of turbo a little bit differently. But I don't know what it'll go up to. I'm going to find out if it, if it tops out at 22 psi or whatever. I'll Put the seventy eight seventy five on and keep whacking it, dude. That thing, anyway, that thing's gonna make so much power. So okay, so as for the transmission, uh, Dakotas for like two years had an A X five, which is an AR five. Mm -hmm. uh, the AR five is like the stronger. And for two years, they had that on the back of an inline four, I think. Uh, that I think it was an Iron Duke. They they used Iron Duke for a while or something like that, and it just so happens to bolt all together because LS4 doesn't use a small block Chevy pattern. Yeah. LS4 actually uses the same pattern as on the 2.8. So I could have bolted up a T5 to it, but the T5 obviously, you know, one of the last. <laughs> so here's a good question. A shout out to Lunar. Big Mike, have a great evening. Um, but John is asking, what boost level and static compression ratio are you guys going for? I know you just said that you had 8.3 and Ken's about 11 to 1. But when your guys are building this, was there a specific ratio you were going with and a, amount of boost that you felt safe with? Or was it just, I'm winging it. If it don't blow up, we're holding it together. Uh, yeah, I wanna, I built mine in accordance with a thousand other guys that built them. It's just it's a known recipe that makes power and won't blow up. So, And LSs are great about their chamber design. You can run as much much compression as you want and then throw as much boost at it and if you have e85 you just make all the power and you don't worry about it mike's mischief 8v92 silver 92 screaming jimmy there you go that's uh sounds like something fun i don't know what, what? he was talking about because it sounds like something uh semi-truck related but it yeah, sounds so a whole lot big of fun. truck big truck like a detroit yeah um cousin cleta stream was messing up too last night yeah my my chat's like super slow I can't respond to anybody's. Um... Are you watching it on YouTube or are you watching like? No, like I'm I, I have my laptop through Streamyard. It's just not. It's just not working right. Like I can't. Yeah, I every just, time I, I go, just, uh, pull up the YouTube live and watch it on there and comment right. And That's what I'm doing. I'll just keep yeah. going now. But um, Mike Smith, if your lives are awesome and chalked up full of information, thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. And I'm I'm gonna. Not to plug myself on this, but like I think when I'm able to go live, I'm going to try to highlight people and groups, get exposure to mm -hmm. them, get everyone out there. Mike, I'll probably hit you up one day with, with your buddy and with a Zephyr and go there. I know Travis I'm going to have on here. Cousin Cletus Automotive, he does a lot of cool stuff. Um, he's involved in a lot of other things other than the No Name Nationals too. Same with Lunar from Lunar Outlaws Garage. Um, he does a lot of stuff with Hemming. So there's a lot of stuff out here. Shopcat Industries, same thing. Like 
anybody wants to do anything like this, just hit me up. Um, so with that, I do want to, oh, Raker is in the house, um, boosted 931. I want to ask Ken one specific question because I watch your videos on that LS powered inline Ford 300. Yeah. I know you're cutting that intake manifold up. Are mm -hmm. you going to chuck boost to it? Oh yeah, for sure. That I, I was talking to tall John, uh, about this the other night. Like I'm going to, I have a plan for this. And the plan is, is to get it running NA and make a couple passes NA just so I can say I hold the, the NA quarter mile record, whatever the hell it's going to be. I'm just going to say I hold it until some proves me otherwise. And uh, and then after that's all said and done, I get, you know, I'll get it shaken out and get it running good. 78, 75, we're going to throw all the boost to it and we're going to we're going to shoot for the the stock bottom end quarter mile boosted record, which is 1090. So, oh. Nice. Now, Patrick, here's one question for you. I don't think I've ever asked you this. I know the background with Ken getting into boosts and all that, but what got you to say, man, I'm just going to throw a turbo on this thing? Well, it all started out that I bought a $1,200 X block that ended up having cracks in the mains because I was going to make it 450, 454 cubic inch small block Mopar with some really big aluminum heads on it. That turned, it up, turned out being a piece of scrap iron. And I had a, that 318 Magnum laying on the garage floor. And I'm like, well, I had, I hadn't bought any parts. I was starting with the block and was going to build it from there. And I'm like, well, if I can't, I already spent $1,200 and got a paperweight. So I wanted to do something a little bit more budget friendly. So I picked up, had that 318 mag and I'm like, well, if I'm going to turbo it, I'm going to have to have it be injected. It's already injected and I'll just roll with that. So it was kind of necessity more than anything. So I've had to, I'm a big block carburetor guy. That's what I drove when I was yeah. in high school. That's what I've driven for a lot of years, always been carbureted. This is my first uh, dip my toes into the deep end of the pool kind of fuel injection turbo yeah. E85 thing because I didn't want to cut the whole front of the car all up, put an intercooler on it. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I know, I know Patrick that, you know, you know, I talked a lot. Um, my chat's all jacked up. So I'm missing something. I apologize guys. Um, so, I, I know you're a big black guy. I know Ken's background, you know, quite a bit. Him and I talk um, probably as much as you and I do, Pat, on different stuff. And he also, guys, you need to check out his flat head, or should I call it rust head, tree root. Just, it's really cool. He's going to attempt to get something going that's very cool. Now, there's a lot of budget-oriented stuff out there when it comes to these builds. And you see in these magazines this everything built, beautiful high-end LQ9 or this or that or Hemi or, or whatever. Stuff that most of us in this chat, um, we can't afford. And, you know, there's a lot of guys taking junkyard uh, LS motors because the rings are already wore out. Everything's wore out and it's good for boost. And then you hear, okay, I'm going to take this and throw an eBay turbo kit on it. There's a lot of guys doing that. And I've seen good and bad things, but I want your guys' perspective. Is it worth it if you have something, doesn't matter, I'm going to go get a two three hundred dollar engine from the junkyard five three most likely or four eight ls or any motor you like and i'm going to get an ebay turbo kit and throw it on there what's the pros cons and what can you expect if you guys have done this route all right so i got a pro right off the bat and it's because of this comment from redbeard uh redbeard says i'm an na because i can't afford a power adder uh na is four five six times more expensive uh, than any than anything turbo, okay. If you want to make 600 horsepower NA, you're spending at least four times as much money, okay, as you are. And anyway, that that's the second thing. Travis, it is not a V60. Uh, it is it's, it's a regular LS engine, and it just has that weird bell housing on it. Like that's it for the LS4. But anyway, yeah, pro. It's cheaper. Than NA. That is a huge pro. You want to make power, you want to make it for pennies, you put a turbo on it. I, I'll add to that oh. that for my for my setup, I would have spent more in my short block than what I have in everything under the hood that's hooked to the engine. I mean, my engine that's in there now, I put new bearing new bearings in it. New bearings, not new rings. They got the 150,000 miles on them. I just made sure I put them back in the same hole. Uh, I only had to put bearings on it because I looked at the cam bearings and they were bad, so I wanted to replace Ooh, them. So not supposed to look at them. I know, but I did because I tore it all apart. 
<laughs> okay, so th that's another good point to make right now. I know with like an NA motor, any motor, if you get detonation and it just keeps beating on it, it you know, that could really just mess up the, the world of anything bearings are related. So the one question I have is if you're going to boost an engine, I don't care if it is a junkyard motor, something you built yourself. Um, two questions. One, if it is actually a junkyard motor, do you suggest leaving it and send it? Or do you suggest, you know what, throw some good bearings in there? Okay. So I know what Ken's going to say. I, 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 I got can, the I can, answer. Can, the yeah. answer is right here. Answer is right here. Dart sport. Yeah. So this I, depends on the engine, man. Like, in the LS world, if it spins, it wins. You slam a turbo on it, you gap your rings if you're running more than 8 PSI, and you send it. And you don't look at the cam bearings when you change. The only time you change your we cam don't. bearings on LS is if the cam bearings come out with the cam. You don't look at them. <laughs> if it comes okay. out clean, you stuff the new cam back in. You're, you, the bear, the bear, you don't change bearings. I'm uh, JB, thanks for joining tonight. Hope you got a little bit of information on that. Um, yeah, if, if I'm gonna you point have something a main out. or a rod bearing that's chewed yeah. up, fine. Change it. Double check it with plastic gauge if you have to, because if it's chewed up, it's going to get more chewed up, right? But, like, yeah. if if there's a little wear, it has 200,000 miles on it, it's going to go another 200,000 miles. Just leave it alone. Two things real quick. Uh, Destroyer, that's awesome. Um, when you get that information out, share it. That's going to be great. He's going to host a live to promote folks under 500 coming soon. And the other thing is NA 300s. Now, Ken, this is from Andy. He's got the Casper mixed up boss. Mm -hmm. He knows his Fords. NA 300s went nines back in the yeah. 70s. Oh, no. I 100% I believe that because there's there's this guy out here. Was It's called the Boss 300. And they yes. say it's making 650 horsepower NA. Right. And, it's, that's um, how, what, what that what what channel was that? Oh God. Uh, it's not Ed's machines, is it? It's something. No, it's something machine though. Like I can find it later. But okay. Yeah, I 100% believe that. But see, that's like I said, I'm going for the stock bottom end record, right? And that thing definitely wasn't stock bottom end. That had a thing that had aluminum rods and yada 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 yada, right? But yeah, I 100% I believe that them guys were just making streamers back in the day. And here, after, here's after the, seeing that 600 horsepower one, yeah. Here's the question I have for Patrick. So, and I don't know the answer to this, and this is why I want to know. And I know you're only running a single turbo. And what is the benefit of twin turbos over a single large turbo? Or is there a benefit? I, I, think, got, it's, I think it's more moving parts. I think some people, some engineers, not me, some engineers like sym symmetry. Mm-hmm. And and that's why I think you see more more ter more more twins. Um, in my opinion, if it's a properly sized single, it's a better combination. Yeah. If, it, if it's if it's twins, you're doing it because you want to do twins. Yeah. So uh, I, I, my my two cents on this is first of all, Travis, LS is are cheap and reliable, and they go fast. So maybe that's with everything beforehand. Yeah. Uh, or more power, more power stuff. But uh, anywho, uh, so yeah, there is no benefit to going uh dual turbos you first of all you have twice of everything so that means you have to spend twice as much uh you need yes. two turbos you need two waste gates yeah yeah, yeah yeah it is it is it starts it starts adding up quick um it looks cool that's the benefit like you know patrick said you know it's all it's all even on both sides it, it looks cool um but yeah there's like one well-sized turbo is going to make more power than two small ones. For sure. Real quick, um, Ari, Ari's a moderator. I added a moderator. He's one of them. Ari, if you could add anybody's channels on here, links to them, that'd be great. But um, if you could, um, you, Andy said Bruce Sizemore is the guy. You can see a lot of the info on Drag Bros. If you get time, Ari, um, find the information on that. It's a crazy, okay. it's, so a, it's boss, a boss Cleveland headed 300. Yeah, yeah. If I'm correct. The boss 300 is on Ellison's machine shop, your engine guy. And Ellison. if you just search boss 300, it's the very first uh, video, at least on my, on my search. Um, and, and yeah, this thing is sick. It has individual throttle body set up. It has this boss head. It like I said, it has aluminum rods. Like the thing is just sick. Yep. It is. Um, and real quick, like I said, I am having chat issues. A friend of mine that's not for the no-name nationals 
if uh if micah's out there i'm saying hello um probably gonna see a little bit of ls stuff on my channel he's got a i put a thing on my community tab about a truck it's gonna be pretty neat <laughs> um yeah, levi's right, in the house so the levi thing. levi plays around turbos and stuff like that too but um okay ken here here's something uh, i guess it could be deemed like a serious question when it comes to the world of turbos you do hear people talking about the very large turbos and the smaller ones which spools quicker yeah is there a relationship between let's say horsepower um or cubic inches or whatever and turbocharging an engine okay so okay so a 78 75 is going to make more power at a, at the same boost level as a GT45. And that's only because the turbo is more efficient, it's making less heat, and that less heat transfers into more power uh, because, you know, the air is denser, okay? So there's that. But Levi, I fun, I disagree with his comment because I, it, when you're at the track, you're not leaving, you know, you're leaving at 3, 4K, rpm right you're spooling your turbo is making boost right you're not just leaving from a dead stop so to say like i like i don't now the guys that are running compound turbos two turbos right those guys right they might be uh they might be I mean, that's obviously a benefit like because you're making like 50 pounds of boost at that point right um but you're leaving at like four grand you're making because you can't leave you can't leave making 10 pounds of boost you're just gonna burn the tires off anyway so like you're only leaving at like five psi tops really depending on yep. what what your setup is you know you can't just leave at like all the boost you have to slowly ramp in the boost as you go down the track or you're just going to blow the tires off. So is that kind of why, you know, I have been paying a lot more attention to the world of uh, turbocharging and you hear a lot of guys um, that are running what would be considered, and I'm going to ask Patrick this because he, he can reveal it, um, running more of a, if you want to call it almost like a highway gear, we're out of the hole, you're just not blowing everything off and you're in your role in that power. And so Patrick, um, I know your car's fast. You say it's slow. I'm calling bullshit on that, as I usually do. But can you explain um, on that the gear ratio, how that factors into these turbo cars? Well, I know. Thanks, on, Ari. Like, Thanks, my, Ari. Like on my setup, it's only uh, I only got a 323 on it with a 30 inch tall 315 60 drag radial, so I can cruise down the road at you know 2100 RPMs, and a lot of that is is you want a lot of I'm going to call it exhaust thrust, if you will. You want the engine working hard. Um, that's why you don't put, you know, a 410 gear or something like that in it. Because uh, the, then, then the gear is is really, really, you know, pushing the car forward. Um, on my setup, man, I can, I can break the tires loose, you know, at 50, 60 mile an hour driving down the highway, just stand on it. Um, I'm actually probably going to have to do a little bit more work to my setup. I'm going to put a shorter tire on it because, uh, since we're going to run eighth mile, I'm going to have to need, I need to do a little bit something different to uh, get my RPM up a little bit more. But. So Levi says compound or twins. They are different compounds are two turbos combined. A twin turbo car is two turbos, one each. Okay. That does make sense. Now yeah, that, that was that. kind of my point. That was yeah. kind of my point that like, tur like if you're running compound, I was, that's, that's different. I don't know what these guys running, you know, in the twins in the, the eighth or yeah but just just remember the guy that's won drag week seven times larry larson built his caddy with a ginormous 118 millimeter single turbo yep, yep. So and just i give, think that goes along with what ken's saying you, he's leaving at you know 4500 rpms or something like that and yeah the thing sounds like a jet airplane at the starting line but Yep. Look how fast it is. It doesn't exactly. blow the tires off and on the big end, it's it, it mile an hour is like crazy. Yeah, but uh GM G about the, the gearing, right? GM knew this like way back in the nineties when oh, they yeah. built the uh they built the cyclones. Like they had a really road they had a road gear in them, like a cruising gear. I think it's a three forty two gear in those. Yeah, it's a yeah. three forty two exactly. And they turbos, turbo cars love you know, decent highway gears. Like they 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 don't they just scream with them. They, they don't they don't care. Like, that's another the great GM's thing about them. Too, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick, I am going to plug Ari. Ari is a moderator. Um, 
he does a great job on a lot of other channels. Um, if everyone could, if you haven't seen his channel, go check it out. Share, like, subscribe. Um, he does a lot of cool stuff. He's got a cool truck. He's got a Mopar with a Slant 6. He's in Southern California, and he's enjoying a much better weather than probably most of us here in the Midwest or somewhat near the Mid-South because of weather. Um, so, yes, thank you. Very much appreciated, Ari. Um, so here's a good one um, we have on here. Travis Mopar Garage Compounds are on diesels to get 75 to 100. Now, this, I don't own a diesel. I never have. I like them. But a friend of mine, he was always into diesels, Cummins. And I saw that one time, and he explained the theory of compounds, um, especially how that works with the diesel application. Yeah, Richard I Holder has a very good, very good video on running compounds on, I believe it was an LS. I think but, so. uh, I know uh, on the one video, I think everybody's probably seen flying around where the diesel engine on the dyno like splits in half, like right yes. at the crankcase. Yes. I think it that explodes. one, I think they were pushing 150 PSI into that and there was a problem. So that brings up another question I have for you guys. Um, you know, a lot of naturally aspirated cars are nitrous cars. You know, the, the fuel delivery really matters, especially when you start getting up into the higher RPM range. I'm building something naturally aspirated where at first I'm going to end up going just with a large mechanical fuel pump. Most likely we'll end up needing to go electrical. I know I'm going to have to do a lot of rework on that. Um, but what, when you're building one of these turbo cars, what is one thing as far as advice goes um, on fuel delivery? You can't have too much fuel. Yeah. I say uh, in my, in my opinion on fuel delivery, I would, Re highly recommend EFI, some kind of fuel injection. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna put a carburetor on my big block with twins, but that's gonna be a burnout car. It's never gonna probably go down the track, or if it does go down the track, it'll probably be on fire. Yeah. Well, I mean that that'll make for some good content, Patrick. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a burnout car for next year. That's it's. Let, let's just it's, let's just say I plan next year when I come for the burnout contest, I plan on winning it. Mopar it, Mike, it, Mopar Mike makes does make a really good um, uh, point here. I, I like the old uh, old school. I like the old blower cars. I, I love seeing the vintage stuff with the AFX cars. Raker had mentioned something about that. Um, just the old superchargers on there, injected on nitro. Um, one thing cool though is if you guys ever get a chance, and I'm sure most of you already know this, I believe it was the Hemi Honker was a twin turbo Mopar back in the '60s, and Ohio George Montgomery ran a Ford looked like a funny car, but I believe it ran in uh, like a gasser class. It was interchangeable to me, some classes and it was a boss 429 twin turbo application. So they were playing around with that back then a lot, but um, I do like the turbo stuff. It's really grown on me when it comes to force induction, you know, those superchargers sticking up are awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. I say, remember the Grand Atelier's, uh they had land speed car that I think was a 62 Plymouth. What was, uh, I think it was a twin turbo car. Yeah. Ari's right. Sniper systems are pretty forgiving. I, um, Kyle and I've played around with his on his GTO. I mean, it's naturally aspirated, but, um, there, that's a very forgiving, easy setup to work with. Um, not too hard to tune, not too hard to get set up. A lot of fail safes that are put into place. Um, Ken, here's one for you real quick. If you were like, I know you have that, that Ford that's turbocharged. What is one thing you would do differently? Oh, well, the, the, well, okay. Oh man, that's a hard question to be honest. There's so many things I do differently, dude. Like I built the truck for shits and giggles, right? So I look back on it like, man, what is it? But okay, so I got two big things, right? The first one is I already used a regular truck LS engine. We're gonna use that LS4. That was a dumb idea. The damn starter's right by my foot because it's not. <laughs> it's not where it's supposed yeah. to be. It. I had to bend all the pedals to the left to make room for my big ass feet. So like that sucks. And then uh, the other thing, oh, man, the other thing, I probably would have put it into something different. Truck's too small. I'm 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. It's not a good fit. LB's in the house. Hello, LB. Well, I'm five foot nine, so it'd probably be a good fit for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you'd fit in there great. So same question for Patrick. What is one thing that you would do different? I would change everything on the hot side on my system, which the hot side, uh, there, there's something we didn't cover and we probably should cover it real quick right here. We're kind of, we're kind of about three quarters of the way through main components of a turbo setup. There's the turbo. There's the wastegate that basically bypasses the turbo to regulate boost. <coughs> and then in between the turbo and the engine 
somewhere in there is a blow off valve, which basically when you shut the throttle and you have all this boost, it, it gives it somewhere to go. It basically bypasses the from going into the engine. Yeah, um, that that's really bad on the turbo to just slam the throttle shut and that boost has nowhere to go. It goes yeah, back you know, to the sloppy turbo. Yeah, does it all the time. I mean, yeah, he yeah. <laughs> But but he does it more in racing application than any anything you would street drive. I, I don't know what the longevity of that would be. I don't recommend it. I think you should no, have it, all the parts. It it it's hard on the turbo. But yeah, if I if I had to do it over, my I, I should show you a picture of my hot side. It's got like pretzel bends and crazy shit in it. And yeah, when I did it, I went when I got when I finally put the the bigger radiator in it. I went, oh my goodness, I would have changed so much. And since uh. Ken, you were probably smart and used a open um, turbo flange. Since my since the GT45 is a divided, I used a divided turbo flange. And the most important thing to know if you're using a divided on a T4 setup is don't fall to the peer pressure and try to use two-inch tubing. Use mm. two and an eighth-inch tubing, two-inch ID, because yeah. then it perfectly matches the divided flange. There you Ask go. me how I found that out. I, I have pictures. <laughs> it was ugly. It's like, you can't stretch. So Buff says, so much turbo knowledge makes me realize I'll need to phone a friend or have a pizza party with turbo friends to make it happen. You know, that's actually a really good idea, but you know what? Just don't tell them you're going to be playing with the turbo. Just tell them they're coming over for pizzas and beers. Dude, don't have the beers. Just have the pizza and the turbo. There's so uh, much Ruben's in the house out there right now. Like there's yep. so much information. Uh, like I said, here's the thing. I know a lot of you guys are not LS guys. You're not Chevy guys. I get that, right? But if you want to learn turbocharging, if you want to learn EFI, watch the LS videos on it. It's Friday. apples to apples, yeah. okay? You can run a you can run a big block Mopar with a stock LS ECU. It's not that hard to do. Like that's the stuff you guys need to watch. And I know you're not. So I have. One last question. We're at 48 minutes roughly in this, and this is, I don't know if this is going to ignite people to just roll their eyes or be like, no, that's BS. But, you know, I, I saw this in a build when I think it, and I'm not a newer car guy, but I believe it was on a Hellcat, supercharged, Hemi, and at the end of the exhaust, it had turbos. Why are they, one, putting them that far back? By the way, Hello, Ruben from Muscle City Manus. Check him out. Um, why are they doing that? Well, they want to put turbos on it. And, and on a Hellcat, there is no room anywhere around the engine. So they're remote mounting it way at the back of the car. Um, there's pros and cons of that. I mean, since it's already supercharged, you're going to have instant some instant power down low. And then up top, you know, the turbos are going to supplement the supercharger. Um so that you don't won't see the, the bad part is if you just had turbos and were remote mounted, you'd see a lot of lag. Um, that's what I was wondering because that's yeah. that's not instantaneous. Well, don't right. forget like the biggest con of putting turbos back there. You is have to what have you do with the oil? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to have some way to get the oil from the turbo back to the and like there's the being that low, you have to actually have a pump. To, it, it's just it's not worth it. Don't ever do that, guys. Don't ever put don't don't low mount turbos like that in the back. Don't ever because do I don't that. I don't remember I don't remember like. You know, like they had the numbers on the car from the factory and they tuned it, put exhaust on it, put those turbos. And the obviously the money that probably went into it was more than most people are going to put into a complete build. Um, but the um, the numbers that it produced were negligible. You know, well, I mean, I you could it. probably get it out of just tuning alone. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of who it was that built the one car, um, the Charger. I think it was a Hellcat Charger. They had the remote mount turbos. They were at Roadkill Nights here a couple years ago. See, here, here's something for everybody. Like I know carb guys always talk about how the carb mixes the fuel with the air and it cools the air, right? We all we all have heard that a million times. When you run EFI E85, okay, E85 being alcohol, it is a it, it chemically it's a chemical cooler all right it, it shoots down the runner into the in the intake charge into your cylinder it cools the charge in there it doesn't have to be mixing with the air the whole way down all right and i know a lot of, a lot of people don't understand that because it, it's a chemical cooler 
that's why Patrick gets away with not running an intercooler with E85 because right. it cools it cools the charge so much. Yeah, I that, still have pretty hot. Remember, I still have pretty hot uh, incoming air temps. But Patrick, okay, so I was thinking about this. You you say you don't have an intercooler because of room constraints, right? Right. Well, it's, don't it's, you... it's, I, actually, I've got room. The problem is that really to put it in a good spot, I need, really need to do redo the hot side. Well, no, here's the I don't want to cut the, the car up. So here's the thing. Run. Everyone give a shout out to Junkyard Willie. He says he's late, but he made it. Thank you very much, Junk Car Willie. Run a uh, watered air. Okay. Oh, they but... pa- yeah, they package a lot better. You can put yeah. them pretty much anywhere. No cutting up the car and they cool better. Then, then they're ugly. And I, I, they I, are I, ugly, right? But it's going to be under the hood or it's going to be somewhere. Yeah, see, You're... I run hoodless. I run topless a lot. So. Yeah. I, I don't know. I still <laughs> think that's, that's your best bet. I would go. Like um, I think I'm I think I'm actually gonna put meth in it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a meth injection kit like right after the turbo and and kind of try to cheat it that way. Yeah, I mean that works. That works. All I got to do is get in the tens with the three eighteen. That's that's the that's the bet. See, that'll be cool. I mean, that's absolutely really cool. I've mile an hour fast enough with the with the weight of the car that it should have been in the tens, but my car launches for. I haven't did, I've done zero suspension tuning because I keep popping 318s. Which that was all I because mean, I had the wrong. I the mean wrong, E85 uh, is 80% alcohol, man. Like it's it's 90% where I get it here in Decatur. Yeah, yeah. You told me that you got you got the hookup on that one Facebook group. They test it and make, tell everybody. Yeah, I test it every time. It's never it's in, in the summer blend has never been below <laughs> nine ninety ninety percent. That's awesome. So, what do you guys think in the chat? Learn a little bit about turbo stuff? Are you more confused? Are you wanting to go get a turbocharger, slap it on your car, have some fun? I, it actually intrigues me. I know Ken's like, you got to put a big old turbo on that 521 and just send it to the moon. And uh, that would be absolutely fun. One, um, one, one thing I'd have to say is don't be scared about oh, when you're doing a turbo build. Don't be scared about downsizing your injectors. Go big. Go, go big. Go yeah. Uh, okay. So if anybody does look in this in the future, decapping ejectors, easiest way to get budget injectors. Like right. you, you, get, you go to the junkyard, you, you get 16 of them, you decap them, send them out to have them tested. You get a matching setback, which will flow 80 to 90 pounds. And like, that's good for like six, 600 horse, 700 horse. So. Right. I say I, I bought actually bought some Siemens 80 pound hours and they were only uh, 300 bucks on sale. Lunar E85 is great and pulls the heat out of the air. Problem is where I live, there's only one place an hour away. That's an hour away that sells it. Okay. So yeah, that's another yeah. thing when it comes to fuel. That, and that's not that big of a deal though. You can like, if you guys are racing and you want access to E85 and you don't have it, you could buy a 50 gallon drum of it. Use it all season. That is true. Uh, Buff, uh, he said he's interested, but wouldn't help for sure figure it all out. There's a huge community of guys here. Um, these two guys are good. Uh, Dr. Art, uh, Jason from Jason's Garage Incorporated. Uh, Lunar, another good guy for it. He, he plays around with pretty much everything, whether it be a Buick, whether it be an import, anything. So anybody out here, I mean, it's, it's one of those things like reach out and if they give you bad advice, go do a burnout in front of their house at 3am. I gave you permission on that. So I tell you what guys, what I'm going to do, if anybody wants to join this chat, I'm going to see if I can get this to work right. I couldn't type in my uh, comments and let's see here. Let's see if I can copy this in. If anybody wants to join, I'm going to go ahead and enter the, oh, come on now. I'm frozen again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enter this in. Uh, yes, buff turbo party at my house garage. That is absolutely would be a blast. I'm sure something would get done and it would be a whole lot of fun. I have a picture, Jeff, that I'd like to show people on, on kind of what, kind of what I ended up doing on my setup. Oh, so this right here was in the very early stages. And let me see here. I've got a good one down here somewhere. It shows all the craziness. 
I've I've probably changed this thing a half a dozen times already. Man, Lunar got the big money if he's buying a Haltech ECU. Jeez. Yeah, I I I, I fired mine up with a two hundred and fifty dollar mega squirt. Yeah, yeah, like woof. Haltech stuff is way out of my budget. Oh, I'm not finding the picture I'm hunting for. Oh, there it is. Come on, you. Trying to get everybody in here. <laughs> Hey Jeff, you know who we need to reach out to? We need to reach out to this guy. Uh, he's called Turbo World. Yes, that's his, channel. that's his channel's name. I really like that guy. Like, I think he's going through some stuff right now, so he, he could use everybody's support. But he, he's a really cool guy. He got a lot of good yes. videos. Yes, and uh, no worries on that, Lunar. Anytime you want to join, just holler, and we'll do that. So, can that gives a oh my okay my. Streamyard locked up again, but here, here's another thing too: is Ken and I talk a lot about weird, oddball, eclectic, strange things out in the world. And I know one of the things that's always not popular sometimes you hear of the carburetors that are like lawn mowers on like an engine application. We got talking, and if you actually go check out Thunderhead 289's video. It is actually really cool, like how he does it, how it, I'm not going to give it away, how it came about and all that type of stuff. So when you hear something new or you hear something third hand about a build or how things are going or anything like that, go check it out. Because I was pleasantly surprised. That's kind of how I got into, you know, learning about a little of this turbo stuff and also some of these builds like I, I like Ken's videos, like what in the hell is an LS 300 Ford? OK, I got to watch this. Patrick, uh, you know, a Dick Landy car with a Turbo 318. It's like, oh, hey, that's interesting. Yeah, so, Patrick, you need to get started on your Slant 6 Hemi head, dude. You're, oh, you're, man. You're, I, you're, your channel's going to explode, dude. I, 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 I unfortunately already worked on that some. I, I got a gasket and laid it on yeah. the, and it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a chamber by chamber cut. So, okay. Oh, wow. So Andy yeah. says, y'all going to make me put twins on Casper, one feeding each carb. You know what, Andy? If you ever that did would that, be sick. Like, that oh would God. break the internet. Yes, it would. That would be awesome, Andy. I would help you do it. <laughs> yes, that would be very cool. Um, Pro Charger. The Turbo is about six inches above the hood, though. Pro yes. Charger. <laughs> no, I don't like Pro Chargers, man. <laughs> no, so, I, I, I think Pro Chargers are the best way to go. It's just turbos are the most efficient way to go. <laughs> yeah. I like. Well, uh, well, I want to. I want to interject a couple things about when <laughs> when y'all were talking about fuel and turbos and stuff. Yeah. What, you got, what, man? what I learned whenever I was doing import stuff is the larger the turbo, the more volume of air you have. Right. So if yeah, you have like air. a yeah, yeah, right. If you have like a GT three, right at 10 pounds of boost it's not going to be the same volume as a as a gt45 at 10 pounds of boost right Ooh. because the smaller turbo has to work harder it makes the air hotter yeah, see, and just just remember the, the, yeah. the, the 10 psi no matter which turbo it is is just a measure of the restriction yeah right sometimes yeah. The, if you've done it right the engine is the restriction yeah right exactly but but it's about volume of air right same, yeah, same with the, the fuel question somebody had. Um, it's not so much of your PSI of, of you know, the pressure of the fuel. It's the amount and volume of the fuel as you go up in horsepower. It's the same with nitrous. You know, you got you got to keep your volume of fuel up to keep your charge cool enough to keep from going lean. Yeah. Yep. You so can't, you can't have too much fuel pump. That, that right, is. and yeah, and same good. with injectors. Whenever whenever I was buying injectors for my SR20, I asked my asked a friend of mine that was going to tune it. I said, "Well, which injectors should I go with? You know, five fifties or or what?" And he says, "If you can get thousands, get thousand cc's, and we'll just tune them back that yeah. way." If you want to go with a bigger turbo later or you're going to tear the motor down and rebuild it, you don't have to rebuy injectors. You know what? 
that so, that's a good point. And I, I want to so buy the biggest no. injectors you can yeah, or can yeah. afford and then tune them back. You got room so, to grow. Here's the thing, though, on injectors I want people to remember, OK, because bigger injectors have shitty spray patterns. OK, like the the, the, the injectors that they, we use on the, like that they use on like a thousand horsepower LSs. It's spray pattern is like a pencil. It's just straight into the cylinder. There's no. There's no, you know, really break. Yeah. Now what uh, on a turbo build though, what breaks up the fuel is actually the turbulence from the yeah, turbo same. of that air being forced into the cylinder with the fuel. That's what breaks it up. That's why we get away with it. I know Tall John was talking about on this is only NA stuff. I didn't really understand this at first. On NA stuff, you obviously can't do that. You need your fuel to be broken up. Right. Out. Yeah, so that I, I I feel yeah. like carburetors are alive. better for NA stuff. Yeah, I'm talking. So to my... we do have uh, John Wilburn for the John Wilburn show in here, as Ari said. Thank you for joining, John. And one other thing is, is um, I want to touch on something about that John, that Ohio George Montgomery car. I got to see that car in real life, mm-hmm. and absolutely gorgeous mm-hmm. car. Like it's, it's been restored, cool. obviously, but everything was meticulous, chrome, polished, painted, no scratches. <laughs> gorgeous check that out sometime ohio george montgomery's um i i want to say raker said a gas class it's a twin turbo 429 mustang and it is absolutely cool and you know what if and i know somebody i know it's john that said hey don't do that to ruin the 70s look i agree with that with casper but you know can you imagine the power that would make john say, look that that's the thing right you have to decide what your build is if your build is to go fast and you're not really worried about what it looks like. Uh, I mean, besides like, you know, small things, what kind of car it is and what you're trying to do. If you're trying to go fast. You don't really care about the look. Sure, sure. If, you're trying to, if you're trying to go for the look, you don't really care if it's going to go fast, right? You got to pick one. Sure, sure, sure. Here's the deal. So what, you guys are talking about these turbos. Like I decided I hate turbos because I don't <laughs> like the bump box. No, no, I, know, I don't like the bump box of it all. And the, for the drag racing part, then the, what it, how hard it is on your transmission is unreal. But well, see, they're they're not but, though, but, right? But you just have to have the right I agree. transmission. Yeah, yeah I, and I trust me, I got it. It is the converter. That's the thing is the reason I say pro charger over turbos is strictly because you don't got to have different headers. So if you say you have somewhat of a hot yep. car, you already got something going on. You don't have to buy headers. You already got the headers there. You don't. You can. You don't have to do that. You don't have to buy a different converter. I mean, you, you probably need a different converter, but it's a lot easier to find a blower converter, use blower converter, than it is to find a used turbo converter because they are different. And the camshaft, a blower, a blower works on a regular camshaft way better than a turbo works on a regular camshaft. So, like, really, if you do turbo, a turbo, if to do correctly to build, like I'm talking about like what I do, like try to go real fast. I know, I know you get away with it, but the correct way to do it is a complete, complete overhaul rebuild. The camshaft should be different. The headers have to be different. The uh, converter, it's all different. Over a blower, a roots blower or a pro charger is way simpler to convert your engine to than a turbo. Now, in my situation I'm in now, I believe I'm going to go turbos. I had to say all that crap about them. Just with the new strut front end I'm doing here, just the way it looks. And when I get the tire on here, there's about this much room for a set of headers that I want, okay? It ain't going to work where I need it. So a one turbo tube would look a lot better. So now I'm looking at somewhere making turbo here. Real quick, um, just to let you guys know real quick. Um, John Wilburn is going live tomorrow night with a special guest about Roadrunners for all you Mopar guys out there, all you no-name national guys, and everybody else. And I saw Tom posted something there about a, uh, a race way for sale for $11 million. So, um, Ken, um, just kind of go digging in your mattress and get that change, and we'll get it sent to Tom so we can buy our own track for the 2023, whatever we want to do with it for Wilburn Nationals. So, Have you guys you guys run your single turbos. Is it better to go two? I mean, for building boost quicker, is twins easier to go two smaller twins than one big single turbo, correct? All right. So in my opinion, okay, this is my opinion. There is no advantage to twin turbos except looking cooler, right? 
if you're you're not you're you're not leaving at full boost anyway you can't. You're, okay you can't right because you're just blow the tires off you're ramping the boost in you're but you are leaving in boost because you're leaving at like four well, however much rpm you're leaving the line at okay you're you're going to be in boost so how fast it takes it to spool doesn't matter the turbo spooling like it's doing what it needs to do so it, it don't matter that's why these guys run these enormous stupid enormous turbos because they're sitting there they're spooling them up on the line and then they're leaving well, so here's a question let, here's a question let's too. do this real quick but about that can okay the two jay-z guys right yeah two yeah. jay-z came with like four what was it three no it's like 350 horsepower twin turbo it did it first had, thing it everybody had, uh were they what were they they weren't compound they're so no they weird. were se sequential yeah, yeah there's a little sequential. smaller yeah, one yeah, and yeah, a little yeah, bigger yeah. one yeah okay now what everybody does with them is first thing they do is they pull those twins off throw them in the garbage and put a big gt35 on them yeah yeah at that it jumps from 350 up to 500 with tuning that's sure. it so yeah. That'll tell you what kind of power is the difference between them. What? That's Travis talking. Yeah. Well, I think that's just like, well, that's just because, like, they're making more boost with the bigger turbo, probably. Well, right. See, well, just, yeah, but it's more efficient with the single turbo. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because, like, you're not, like I said, it's, it's, it, all that heat, you know, it has it go. It has to go somewhere, and it goes. Yeah, because the the twin turbo was set up on those were set up to be driving in traffic. Yeah, yeah. Because that so little like, B turbo, it spools instantly. That's it. I'm just trying to see if you test the gas. Yeah, yeah little turbos do gas. spool instantly. So, okay, <laughs> if you're making a street car and it's never going to the track and you just want that pure, like, buy your balls power, and, yeah, you right. want to hear turbo noises, you want a small turbo because you're not going to be turning the RPM that's going to make that turbo run out of air. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So you want a small turbo. You're going to be making turbo noise. You're going to be burning it. You're going to be boiling the tires off, making all kinds of racket. But you're never going to be turning the RPM where that turbo is out of it. Like, it can't supply any more air. You're just never going to be right. out there. So, yeah, yeah. If you're building a pure street car, He's small sick. turbo, you'll be fine. So, as, as John Wilburn said, sorry to interrupt. I do want to plug this. He has been a great steward of the No Name Nationals. Uh, a few special guests, all Roadrunner owners. And Ari, the greatest moderator in the world. And I think I also put Zero as a moderator also because, you know, I see him out there and he's also a very good one. The also best moderator in the world. He host, he posted a link to John's live stream for that. So please set your reminders and check that out. Um, I have one question on the turbo thing, street car versus drag car. Is there anything you would say, no, absolutely turbo wise, not on the street? A huge single. Yeah, too big of a turbo, like just yeah. something like on the street, like just too big of a turbo that like you're never gonna like see boost, like it's just never gonna make boost. You <laughs> you gotta remember how much how much air it's gonna take to move a big turbo. Yeah. How much exhaust pressure? Because you can't you can't take like a two point four liter and put like a uh GT forty five on it. It's not gonna spool it. I mean it will it's eventually. Just, it will eventually. Yeah, it will eventually. Gonna, you're going to be, yeah, it's going to take forever. Right. So I, if you're running I, something on the street, you got to keep it kind of kind of tame. You size, yeah, you have to size it appropriately for your application. Well, you That's also exactly. have, yeah. and you got to have a loose loose converter to get something like that to spool up if you wanted to, too, on the line. I mean, then you you lose the drivability of it. Right. So it's the same. It's the same way as. As running nitrous, you want a nice loose yeah, converter with nitrous. You need a high stall. Yeah, you do need a high stall, right? Because you're. But. So here's my question for you all, you turbo guys and stuff. Like for a street application, this I'm referring to street. Would a diesel turbo probably be the best bet you could probably use? No. Because it depends on the size of the okay. turbo. So the reason like, I'm saying that the low RPM range they're set up for, and it's. You know, it's it doesn't take that much to make the boost go around. No, I mean, no, no, no. So you're going back to the the volume of air with that. Yeah. Diesels produce a, at low RPMs a big slug of air when it comes yeah. out. 
they have so they have so much compression like right it, now it, a gasoline yeah. engine does not have as much pressure exhaust pressure as a yeah. diesel does exactly over, yeah i'm gonna I, I i'm gonna step in here real quick um I'm, I'm not gonna stop the discussion my stream yard link i can't type anything for some reason so i'm just gonna create a shout out for <laughs> see people come in shout out to That's racers awesome, and rods dude. So I'm, I'm, awesome. mixing, I'm, I'm mixing, I'm tech, mixing technology with the uh, pen and paper. What do you want to call it? So if you guys see that flashing up, I'm not losing my mind. My streamyard is not working correctly. Hey, enough. Andy, Andy, if you're still in here, dude, you need to put a turbo on Casper because at 15 pounds of boost, you're going to be making like 1,400 horsepower. And I'd, I'd like to see that. <laughs> Just remember, more horsepower, more fuel, more boom. When things yeah. go bad. Well, yeah, had, yeah, but you don't, you know, you got that's what that's what tuning is for. You make sure you don't have the bad boom, you have the good boom. <laughs> what I'm saying is, Casper Motors, a twenty thirty thousand dollar engine, and LS is five thousand. Yeah, but hey, okay, fifteen psi I'm... isn't shit. You're not gonna hurt an engine on no. fifteen psi. No, not like, unless you got the tune just completely jacked up and you're yeah, detonating. exactly. Like, this is my point, right? Like, uh, a shitty engine on fifteen psi. That makes 300 horsepower NA is not working any harder than a 600 NA uh, engine on 15 pounds, but they're not working any right. harder. Like it, it's not. Yeah, it's, just... and it's with anything. Nitro, you know, people blame nitrous for blowing up motors. It's the tune. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I'm not telling them the tune of the rings. I'm not telling them the turn. <laughs> I'm not telling them the turn 7,000 RPM trying to do it. Right. right. You know, like but, you can keep but... RPMs low and just bring in the boost and make a bunch of power right and the tune is the key to everything yep yes everything. now, so now there is here, some here, other, here's other one thing here's you one. have to be set up for but still the tune is the major thing being our ra racing he's a pontiac guy from illinois he's got a couple wicked pontiacs he makes a good point if you're running a large cubic inch engine twin turbo layout it has its advantages by the way he is somebody that started to tag videos with no-name nationals well um, hey, being all yeah, racing come in here and explain to me what the advantage is i'd like to learn because in all of my knowledge which is not a lot i don't have as much hands-on knowledge as a lot of people i i i have not heard of them i would like to hear what it is well more more horsepower naturally comes with bigger engines so it takes less like I said, it's not boost or whatever you want to call it. It just makes more efficient power with, when you put boost to it. I mean, isn't that true? More horsepower you make naturally aspirated, the better it's going to run boost. Well, with? no, no. Like not okay, necessarily. 15 pounds of boost doubles what you make NA. Okay? That's just that's the equation. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're making NA, you put 15 pounds of boost to it, you double it. Here we'll start her. Okay. So, uh, it also, I don't know, like, the fuel you run and stuff makes a big difference. I mean, it's not, it's not just 15 pounds of boost. It's your air and temperature. Like 15 pounds of boost with hot air is different than 15 pounds of boost with cold air. Well, yeah. That's why we were talking about earlier how, like, a GT45 at 10 pounds of boost will make less power than a 78, 75 at 10 pounds of boost. The turbo is working harder, heating the air up, so you make less power. Right. So a more so, efficient so turbo... That's my deal. It's like you guys saying boost is – it, there's no really exact cal calibration to it. Well, no, here's the thing. Like, so you're thinking about this wrong. Like if you were running wrong. NA and the air was that hot, you'd be making half of what you would on 15 pounds of boost of air that hot. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. All right. Yeah, because once you once – you, no matter what your engine makes, if it makes 200 horsepower, theoretically – at 15 pounds of boost, it should make 400. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, as that's long as you have your fuel right, your timing right. If 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 you have your timing off, say you have your timing way retarded and you have weak fuel, well, you're going to be lean and you're not going to have your cylinder pressure you need, so you're not going to make that 400 horsepower. That's and that's you guys are talking about turbos only, correct? Because a, a blower. Would be different. No, blower's the same way. Blower, yeah, blower the same make way. heat. It, anytime you compress air, anytime you compress air, it makes it hot. It's yep. true. Yeah, horsepower is the same way. Okay, so. It takes, 
a blower takes power to make the power though. That's what I'm saying. The turbine uh, yeah. doesn't. It just has it does, yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So the, the boost number, if you're in 15 pounds of boost on a blower, it's not going to make the same 15. I'm just, I, I'm theoretically here. Okay, guys, maybe I'm just being ignorant. No, but no, 15, you're right. Uh, yeah, you're, because you're going to be burning X amount of horsepower to turn that blower. Exactly. So, right. Here's a, here's a question Raker brings up, and it's a very valid point. If a single turbo is better than twin turbos, why do the pro mod guys run twin turbos? Rules. Well, that Patrick, and what do you got, Patrick? You, you they're trying to get that? 50, 75 I think they were twins because they're looking for every ounce. ounce of ounce of power they can get. And now, if you want to do that, that's fine. But, yeah, but where's the power but, coming from then by running twins like that? I because like I don't know shit about pro stock right so i don't know yeah. yeah i don't know anything about pro mods either well the thing is when you run two turbos you can turn them up and you can get because a because a single turbo to get 100 psi that's gonna have to be a huge turbo right so if you can have two smaller turbos theoretically you can well, right so that's the thing though. Add, are these pro stock guys are they running them compound is that what we're talking about here I don't no, think they do. No, they're not. No, they don't. But if but if you but but with twin turbos, you can instead of getting say a max of thirty psi out of one turbo, two turbos you can get the same size. You can get almost forty. Yeah. Okay. You don't get uh, double. You don't get double the psi. It adds to it. Yeah, but they rub. But like, if you have a, I don't know. Like, I'd have to look into it. Like, I, I honestly don't know. So, I got a question for you. So, a twin turbo, would it, if one turbo is hurt and the other one wasn't, would it make the other turbo worse? Because, like, yeah. it's not, yeah, it's yeah. Just, like, would it back pressure? Well, like, can they back pressure to each other or not? Let's put it this way. If you have a hurt turbo, then the other turbo, then that turbo is going to be fighting even harder because then you're going to have the turbos fighting each other. And that, that's, that's be bad. Okay, so here, here's here's one question when it comes to that, like a hurt turbo. Like if you if you obviously hurt, like let's say you know, like a, a root style blower, you're gonna know it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. What about it? What about a turbo failure? Is it gonna have the same effects to an engine, or it's is gonna it, fall on its nose? Just falls on its nose. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because because you're you're now if the say you break the turbo wheel. Now you're trying to push NA through all that piping and the broken turbo wheel. Nothing's moving. And your it's tune, a big restriction. Your tune's completely wrong too, then. You so. know, PNR racing makes a. I mean, it makes an interesting point. When when you run twins, there's less exhaust plumbing. Flow. Okay, because okay, so here's the thing to remember about turbos. When you're running a turbo set, you want to keep as much heat into the exhaust as possible. Because hot exhaust moves faster. You lost my bolts. Than, right. than, you know, so you want to keep as much heat in there as possible. So I don't know, like, if you think if you have two, you have both your exhaust dumping into a pipe and you're looping it into your one turbo, you think that exhaust gas yeah. would be hotter since you have both, all eight banks yeah. or all yeah. however many banks. I want to do this kind of my strut stuff. They're like, they're fine thread. I don't know where we went. So, okay, I mean, that makes sense. And BNR did make a good point, but the intake plumbing gets more complex if intercool is desired. Um, right. Well, it, I mean, it, it don't really. You you have to you have to buy a more expensive intercooler because then you need to have one with two ins and one out. With yeah, two ins, yeah. And that gets expensive quick. So, so when you're in methanol, though, like just for my purpose, like I'm, run, I'm racing, okay, this, I'm trying, I'm just doing strictly racing. But so when you run alcohol it not, not e5 because when you guys say that it, there is a difference and don't correct me wrong there's a difference between methanol and alcohol yes yes yeah. methanol. Okay, okay, methanol is e85 well, correct hey it's no it's e ethanol which ethanol. is what's in e85 and <laughs> so, okay i don't know this someone someone tell me what's the difference between i know methanol what, what, is what you got to take out of your moonshine that makes you go blind what, right what, what right. is one is corn like, and I was told, like, don't get me wrong, it sounds stupid. They they get the alcohol like I run from like wood, correct? You can alcohol, but, but most of the racing alcohol comes comes from oil. Because like methanol is the first the first stuff when you're making alcohol. Methanol is the first stuff that comes through the tap, right? 
So it, my, so it depends. I mean, uh, how? What, so like you know, you got to realize though, ethanol based I'm fuels. Sure. You you got to look at an ethanol based fuel yeah, from a yeah. different perspective too. Like right. there's sugar alcohols. You have your grain alcohols. Right. Lot, yeah, so, but isn't all isn't all alcohol the the yeast makes sugar and the bacteria eats the sugar and the sugar yeah, makes the alcohol. Makes yeah. Alcohol. So it doesn't matter what your base is, right? It's all sugar that gets eaten by something that gets turned into alcohol. I got right. a question so, here real quick. So Lunar says, remember, you can always put a water to air intercooler yeah. in line. So here's, yeah. isn't there, isn't there some people that are actually spraying water directly in? Yeah. Water injection. Yeah. Water yeah, injection. You yeah. Water injection. Yeah. That, that's not for, that's a, not for a, cool, a, a lot of four cylinder guys do that. That's yeah. not for, the, the, that's not for have cool. water injection. Fuck, that's, you can use, uh, you can use rubbing alcohol. A lot of guys use rubbing alcohol for their meth injection setups. Yeah. That'll work too. The meth injection and stuff is strictly not to cool the the air temperature down. It's just for more compression, correct? No, it's to cool the air. Definitely it's like cool nitrous oxide. Yeah, the yeah it's the same as nitrous. Yeah. Okay. See, LB says I'm right. When you, when you're making alcohol, methanol is the first thing that comes out of the tap when, okay. when, when you're processing it, and that's the stuff you your first like jar. If you're making moonshine, you have to get rid of because that has the methanol in it, and that's the stuff that fucks you up. Yeah, because it burns at a lower or boil. Uh, yeah. It well it, boils at a at a lower, lower temperature. Lower temp, right? So that's the first thing you get. Yeah. Right. So I'm learning from here because all I can tell you right now is, on my mechanical injection, I used to run these things on my small block. Yeah. I went to my bathtubs. Very, there's like five thousand CFM there, man. <laughs> so I, I yeah, it looks like you stick your head through them. Yeah. This, so here's my fist. Okay? So here, here's one question I have, and I and I don't like I said I'm not a turbo guy. Um, can you run nitromethane with a turbocharger yeah. setup? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. There are tons of guys that yeah. There are tons of guys that run a fifty shot just to get going off the line. And not and not being a no like a guy that street outlaws, but that's what Big Chief's been having to do to keep up with everyone with his Pontiac. He has he runs a, I think he runs like thirty percent or thirty five percent now nitromethane mix in his fuel. Oh, yeah. So, so, he, so that's the only – everyone's like, how is he competing? Well, he's running nitromethane. So. Ah. Well, you know, and, and Scott and like, shop? Yeah, I brought up, you know, doing doing what they call a boost shot or a spool shot, small <clears throat> small shot, shot of nitrous. Hey. You know, to get the turbo going. BNR Racing yes. says uh, we're crazy for not checking our cam bearings. I'd like to stress that I only don't check my LS cam bearings every other engine I look at. Just, just don't Sorry, spray Travis. Directly. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. Just don't try and spray nitrous directly into your turbo. Yeah, that seems bad. That seems bad. It, it, it cracks turbo housings because they'll get hot and then you spray that, you know, what is it? Hundred and eight, negative one hundred and eighty or whatever. Huh? What what is R? What does BNR racing mean by stock LS is not priority oiling? Isn't doesn't? I'm pretty sure they oil the mains and the rods first, right? Isn't that priority? I have no idea. I thought priority. I'd, I'd, I'd have to go back to the to the uh, to Uncle Tony's because I think he went over that. So yeah, I think he did too. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. I'm going to give a plug to Jed real quick. Jed's got a cool new video out about six pack stuff. If anybody's a Mopar guy and likes the six pack world, I need, I need to go check that video out. Yeah. yeah. So, what about you two, Hack? What you got going on? Well, yeah. I'm uh, I'm going to see if uh, I got to go to the machine shop tomorrow. Um, head gasket stuff and a couple other items. Uh, my buddy Kyle is working. He's doing a lot of house restoration right now, or I've shot up, Dave, if you want to call it. He's been very busy with that, so he's been very limited on time. Um, so hopefully tomorrow is a good day. Um, if I just right. post a live video, I'm not in it. My garage is burning. You know it was a bad day. Um, but <laughs> long story short, I got to go to the machine shop tomorrow, figure some stuff out with head gaskets and some other stuff. And then from there, I'm really hoping um, – I'm really hoping that uh, I can get some time with some friends and really get hammered down on getting some stuff done with Thunderbird. Uh, so is, it, is there anything the YouTube community could do to help you find stuff or look for stuff or you just. Um, I'll know tomorrow. In fact, I'll, I'll find out tomorrow. And if everything's cool, 
I'll put it on my community tab. But if not, I'll put something out there and just basically say, help me, I am effed. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things. Like, I'm fretting it a little bit, you know, but at the same time, it's like No Name Nationals is kind of meant to be for a lot of us, obviously. So it'll happen. I'm not really too worried about it. Dude, Jeff, I, I still say you just need to use washers and weld up the gap. I know. Yeah. If this wasn't, if this was a budget build, which it has not been, I would. Yeah, uh, see, Scott, uh, Jed says that priority oiling is the mains. I'm pretty sure LSs go to the mains like immediately yeah. after the oil pump. Yeah. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. Let's see what BNR has to say. Um, I know, I know the 4200 straight sixes that the Nelsons mess with. I know those have big time oiling problems, and they're not direct. Yeah. Uh, BNR says prior, priority oiling the mains and rods are oiled by a dedicated oil feed. Cam bearings and other rifle drilled feed. Okay. Well, thank you guys, I'm gonna need to get off here because I gotta go to work. Yep. But Travis if y'all want to know about man. that that 2.8 build real quick, I yeah. I bought a blade. I bought a blazer for like 300 bucks, and about the second day it started. A, a rod started knocking in it. Well, I I pulled into work and the guy says, you know, I got a 2.8 that in my garage that we built that we're not going to use. I said, well, what do you want for it? He says, ah, it's been sitting there for a while, 300 bucks. So I paid the guy 300 bucks to go over to his house. And this thing has a four barrel manifold on it, headers with it. And I got to talking to him. It had 11 to 1 compression. I can't remember the cam specs on it, but it was over 500 lift, I remember. It was a custom grind cam on it. And uh, he, he ported the heads. So I'm like, all right, that sounds like a cool build. Put it in the truck. I was like, man, this thing's kind of quick. So I took it to the track and it ran a 12, like a 1236. That's moving. How long ago was this? Yeah. Uh, it's been many, many years ago. That's, that's, a, that's a, especially then too. I mean, yeah, I mean it was like around two thousand nine nine two thousand. That's flying back then. See, we're spoiled these days. Like, it's so easy to make horsepower and, and this and that. It's just yeah, we we don't uh, like. I think of like it, when you used to run twelve seconds back in the day, that was a fast fast car, and nowadays they're like that, that ain't nothing. Which it still is fast in my opinion. So, well, nowadays it's considered a quick car. Yeah. Yeah. You're not really fast until so, you get down to low 11s. <laughs> so uh, to answer a question that uh, Raker asked me, I, I did look into that. It's not going to happen anytime soon. Just one, the, what I wanted to go with parts availability, time, and there was a couple other things that money were not in the works for it. So, but Let I'll me jump up. off here, guys. I gotta hey, get Travis, to work thank you. Thank and you I'll see you tomorrow again. night, Jeff. Yeah, see you Don't tomorrow night, to buddy. Don't forget to put put out shameless plugs for your for your live tomorrow night because I know I'm sure a lot of people want to get in on that live. Yeah, I am having a live tomorrow night. Um, I, I I scheduled it, but um, the Junkyard Jets, aka Daddy's Money Garage, is going to be live with two hacks tomorrow night at 8:30 Central Standard Time. So it's going to be more of a just meet and greet, just talk about their channel, talk about their build, just stuff like that, and probably have Patrick pop in. So. <laughs> and I, I have to give a shout out to uh, Travis for helping um, get that set up. So Travis, this is my dad. He wanted to say hi to you. Hey, hey yeah, I'm I'm still thinking about that cam. I, no I'm not sure yet. I gotta I, I gotta see it. if I'm gonna actually get those 906 heads or not. So I'm right. I'm still kind of looking. I just heard you ask or say you might, and I thought, well, that might be close to what you're looking for, and it's. Prior to all this problem with lifter issues, so it should have good lifters, blah, blah. So and that, anyway, and it's a flat hydraulic, straight, right? Don't find. Yes. And, and, and you uh, said it was a flat okay. hydraulic? Yes. Okay, cool. Or, no, no. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, yeah, it's, I thought it was a flat solid. I don't know. I would look at it again. I don't think so. I think it's <laughs> hydraulic. We had to look okay. at it again. Hey, there's well, Jed. Hey, Jed. Jed I'll catch you guys tomorrow hey, night. All right, Travis. Later, later, buddy. Yep. Uh, Raker, I am currently looking for that because um, I was originally going to get this car done, race it, then sell it. But I'm 
falling in love with it a little bit, even though it's a Ford. Someone can slap me at the No Name Nationals for that. That's fine. I oh well, he's a Ford guy. I know, but at the same time, it's like uh, I'm going to change some stuff on it this winter, so I'm currently. Yeah, no for that. Jed isn't he a Ford guy? Ed, please take Ow. that cane and shove it up your son's butt. He just Big did. Block Four O Two is in the house. Well, his name's Ed, right? <laughs> oh, uh, my dad's not a Ford guy at all, and I just like he drives a Ford. He works at Click Home Ford plant for years, <laughs> yeah. so I, and I give him more credit about being a Ford guy, and, he, and he's beating the tar out of me. Dude. Well, you know what though? I'm a Mopar guy, Redbeard, and like this is the first Ford thing I played around with. You know, I can I say, would... I, I can say this. There is some benefits to some of the Ford stuff. Not, I'm yeah. not saying over the Mopar stuff, but man, like the the amount of torque that those big, big black Fords can make is just I, unreal. I, I'm a Mopar guy, and I'm telling you right now, I believe the Ford head is superior to a, a, a wedge Mopar. I oh, really the do. Cleveland head's wicked. Yeah, I believe it's superior. I just and Ford just didn't have big enough cam or compression back in the day to use it. So, right. I'm not saying better than a Hemi. I'm saying better than a wedge. Yeah, don't even <laughs> touch a fucking Hemi. No, I'm not saying well, that. No. Well, that's that, 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 a Hemi is its own story. So, you, Jeff, yeah, so just remember my my brother's a 588, 900 pound feet of torque, pump Oof. gas, 92 octane, I've for more it. than 1200 RPM. So, you also got to realize. Chrysler got into it so quick with the Hemi and dominated Ford tried answering it with the camera and the boss 429. The camera was complicated, but obviously it never really made it into production. The boss 429, it could have been good, but Ford screwed that up. And then you started looking at what was going on in the early seventies. Everybody trying to catch up the, the super Cobra jet would have been wonderful if the gas crunch went ahead. Same thing with Oldsmobile. I, I've said this before, but Chrysler just was able to absolutely dominate by getting in, getting you're in the game. Joe Brandon, Ford FEs are freaking awesome. Yes, the 427s for, are badass. You're forgetting though the 354 and 392 Hemi's been out a long time, and they were, even Don Garlic will tell you he he had to get run a 426 when they first came back just because Dodge was sponsoring him. He liked it. Yes. His 392 was actually like better than the 426 yeah. at that so, time. At that time. Uh, at that time. Yes, and my machinist back in the day, you know, he always ran a lot of small block Chevy stuff just because of budget, but he did run some 392 stuff for a while. And one of his race teammates, what do you want to call it, was running 392s. And when everything was switching over to the 426, you know, everyone around him, they couldn't get anything to run. Nope. And he said that, he said that Don Garlitz, when the 426 was coming out and going to races, um, he literally – would keep the 392s as backups just in case it couldn't qualify. Yep. Uh, that's the way it was. And they got, yes. Anyways, because he's sponsored. Anyways, William, uh, have a good night. Thank you for joining. I'm going to get a water. Go ahead, William, Jeff. Go ahead. Sandwich Sanders. Well, and I believe, <laughs> and I believe every distributor should be in the back. No. I know. You don't like that. It's just, there is so much to work on. You're ugly. Man, speaking of distributors, Jed, Jed got me thinking all kinds of dumb thoughts. I was looking at distributor drives for an LS the other night, and it's like, what am I doing? <laughs> You've been talking to Tall John and I too much. Yeah, I th- <laughs> yeah, I have. I was like, this, this is, this is dumb. I'm up. <laughs> I can't get okay. Fine so, red bolts. I don't know where they're at. Being our racing 440 wedge built right is awesome. Naturally aspirated street race engine. They want a 250, 260 at 50 duration cam like a Pontiac 455. Prefer static compression 12 to 13. We'll work at 11. It, it, there are so many different builds for 440s, so many different builds for 383s. Um, I, I'm going to dive into the world of a 383, the 440 crank, and make a low deck stroker. Yeah, uh, same here. It's Ken's doing a 400 with a 451. Um, Jed, this is going to be one of those things where I'm going to reach out to you on some carburetor stuff because I want to go vintage. I can hook you up. And I'll say you I'll say you're going to build a stroker of a low deck. The 400 is really the best bang oh, for buck, but you can't. I, I, blame, I blame Jed for this too. Uh, this is also why I'm looking at the 400 stroker. It's like, ah, God damn it. Well, I got the, th- I got a, I got a complete, uh, 383 and some cranks for free, Jed. So there you go. 
Yeah, I mean that's kind of the way. It's like, man, I'm gonna somewhat try to do this on a budget. Um, Bye, LB. Uh, LB, have a good night. Godspeed on what you have going on, and uh, we'll chat this weekend. Um, Take a, just put a 383 crank in a 400 block, and you can build like a four. What is it, like a 426 almost out of it? Actually, a, a, a 440, a 440 crank turned down to the 33 20, journals yeah. is a 426 low deck. 30 over is the 431. Dude, what a 426 I, low what deck. I was saying is, that just sounds mean. It does. What it does. I was saying is, you can pretty much go, I believe, almost 80, uh, 60, 80 over with just a 383 crank and a 400 block. And what does it equal up to being? I think it's like a 400 and. Or tw- it's all you do feet. understand that a 33 and a 400 have the same stroke. Yes, right? I do, but one steel, the one's four. cast. That's why you go with the steel crank and the 383 over the, the 400. I do understand that, but you got a way bigger bore in a 400 block if you bore 60 over. And it, it's, um, I forgot like what it equals up cubic inches. You just get a big bore, small stroke out of it. That's what I'm going with, Jed. Are you talking about a 3D3 crank and a 440 block? No, a 3A3 crank and a 400 block. It's that just would be getting, a 400. Yes, but if you can bore it out, this, this you can bore the 400s a lot more than you do a 3A3. My buddy, you know, anyways. Five cubic inches for every 30 over is the rough deal. Now, if, if that's what I'm saying, though. Four, four, uh, 400 board 60 over is a lot bigger than a, four, a 3A3. But there's no reason to bore it all the way up because that that maybe 10 cubic inches at 60 over is not going to net you enough horsepower to make up for the longevity and life you took out of the block. Yeah. What is, well, you can find a, war, a 400 block of an RV or something. They're pretty cheap and easy to come by sometimes, if you, as long as you don't want that 72 or whatever year it is. It still, it still comes down to it don't make any sense to take all that life out of it. Well, so If you want yeah. your displacement, here is your... Whiteboard <laughs> calculation of the day. Displacement. Let me see if I can't get this straight here. Somewhat. Okay. There you go. What I'm saying, 40. Jed, is the cubic inches, you can almost get a 420 cubic inch with this just by without doing the, with this, with keeping your crank, just have a bigger oversized piston, right? Well, hey, guys, you can get you even more to. stroke <laughs> out of that crank if you turn it down to small, uh, big block Chevy rods. Real that, quick, thanks, actually, Zero. Yeah. I appreciate it. What? Uh, yep, I'm Patrick, telling, telling Zero. Well, it was do. great talking to you. I look forward to doing it again. Patrick, Thank thanks for Jeff being for a guest host. Yep. 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 I'll yeah. see you guys but later. Yeah, I, I think you, you can take the stroke all the way out to 3.9 if you go to Big Block Chevy Rods. No. Yeah, you can go to no. 3.925. Uh, Daniel, you'd have to go 120 thousandths overbore to get 420 cubic inches out of a 400. Out of 400. Okay. Yeah, because so every thirty thousandths is five cubic inches, roughly. I don't even know the bore of a four hundred. I, I don't even know the bore number. Four three four zero. Okay. And what is a three eight three? Uh, four two five. It's same as a Hemi. Okay. Anyways, but just if you do do that, don't waste turning a crank. It's almost cheaper just to buy you a, one of the cranks of, from like Ohio cranks or. I Eagle saw that. Like, yeah. It's, There's it's cheaper, a... it's cheaper and stronger. I mean, it's not cheaper, but it's only like two hundred dollars more to buy. It an aftermarket crank that's already turned and everything hardened correctly. I don't know, and man. 200 bucks. Not is anymore. 200 bucks. <clears throat> you can't get those cranks as readily as, easy, as readily as available as you used to be able to. Right. Well, I, like, uh, last, time, last time I talked about cranks, they had quite a few of them. Well, any other reason going to use an Ohio crank and something like that. The uh, reason I'm actually going to do this like a little quick, early start, you know, getting stuff like machine and all that, or if I have to get a crank, it just be the supply chain issues. Like it's going to be part of a 2023 car and I'm sitting here going, okay, I, I know what I want to build. Right. And I'm just going to get the engine and transmission out of the way. Just set it yeah. aside. And then focus. I mean, I built my 451 the old school way because I refused to spend the money on the stroker. I was like, this is all factory Chrysler stuff. And then I couldn't find a machine shop to do it. And then that's how I met Mark and how Mark and I became such good friends. Cause he wanted to do something old school like that the way he was learned how to do machining work but yeah ken as you were saying uh uh honestly if you're going to build a 451 or any kind of stroker with a 440 crank you're better off going ahead and going to the big block chevy rod because big block chevy rod is one cheaper more plentiful because chevy's break all the time because they're weak and pathetic (laughs) (laughs) but um you do get more cubic inches you get an extra 20 cubic inches out of it 
So yeah, that's not nothing to sneeze at, really. Like, yeah. So, yeah. so, so Joe's they, got they a really good. <clears throat> that's all they did uh, to my pro stock Hemi. They took the original crank, knife edged it, did all the work to it, and then offset ground the mains to four, uh, so, no, three nine two fifty, and it's got big block Chevy aluminum rods in it. So it are there? Are there steel uh, 440 cranks or yeah, yeah, like most most cranks for 440s are steel. Only in the later <laughs> years after 72, roughly. Yeah. Okay. So here's a question from Joe Brennan, if somebody can answer it: How can overly rich or severely lean AFRs affect ring seating? Well, that's an interesting question. I know mm -hmm. if you want your rings to seat, you want heat. I know that. So if you go lean, you make more heat. What's up, Death Birthday Devil? Boy. Hey, Death buddy. Boy. Happy birthday. It's your birthday, right? It's your birthday? 55? <laughs> no, I'm just dancing. <laughs> so, uh, Jed, if you could go through that once more on the... Oh. Can you hear us? I don't think you can hear us yet. Look, I got a um, question for. Can I ask him a question before you answer that? Isn't there two ways to do the 451? Like, isn't there like with the piston yeah. rod? Like, you can run like a stock like 440 piston almost or something like that. If you run uh, the shorter rod, or I forgot. There, I haven't done it in a long time. I knew there's like three different like combinations. Yeah, what's the so combination? There's there's two ways to build a 451. You can use I, no matter what. You got to have a 400 block and a 440 crank. Okay. Yeah. And then you can either build the inferior engine, which is using a 400 rod. And then that variant, I don't know what piston you use. You might be able to get away with a 440 piston. I don't know. That's the inferior engine because it's a short rod, big piston at the end. Right. Heavy. Wrong, wrong way to build an engine. Yeah. And you have the right way to do it. And this is not my opinion. This is fucking fact. Um, you use the 440 crank with a 440 rod and then i used a keith black uh stroker hyper hyper piston i think the part number is like 280 something it's a real short perfect fucking piston and that gives oh. you a light rotating assembly which is what you want yeah so here, here's a question if, if you're cutting you're cutting the mains on the, on the 440 crank right yeah. and if, if you go to a big block chevy rod you're cutting the rods doesn't that like make your overlap like really small like isn't that doesn't that doesn't that weaken the crank a good deal or am i overthinking it no it just gets rid of the harden that's what sucks you get rid of the harden of the crank and stuff yes yeah, yeah, so you get the you lose yeah. that's what that's what my, that's what jed's engine builder was telling me so he hates turning cranks because he doesn't like it without whatever they super freeze them or whatever to get the harden or whatever it's called and right. stuff it, it i mean for street motor it's fine but when yeah. you go the roads application it really I mean, you, people do it and get away with it all the time. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's just, it's frowned upon. Let's put it that way. It's not. So if you're going to do one, you should have it like nitrated or whatever. Yeah, and that's where I was saying it's cheaper to go just buy an aftermarket crank that's not lost as hardened and stuff because you don't have to do God. it. But for a street car, I would just turn the crank 20, it was a 22 or 20,000. I don't remember. It's something like that, mains. And just put it in. And like Jet said, the superior way is the longer rod and the. In the smaller piston right yeah but, but for people on a budget i believe it's just cheaper you can just run the stock piston or if you wanted to or and then buy an aftermarket piston you can find the pistons more available just because people use them it depends on what you're trying to build if you're building all new parts do what jet said 100 percent. right so, but gotcha. uh, i don't <laughs> but yeah i would never like my dad's saying, he believes if you grind the crank, does it take a special bearing, Jed? No, you do. No, they've got a special bearing you can buy. It has a chamfer on the edge of the on the edge of the uh, bearing for that. Yeah, they have a chamfer. Yeah. That edge. Yeah. Well, That's you just have that chamfer reground on the crank. Yeah, just have reground on the crank when they do it. Brian, how yeah. are you doing, man? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up? Hey, buddy. Is it your birthday? Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. I was sitting here. I was sitting here watching you guys, and then I fell asleep sitting here. And <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I literally said, like, hey, that's where everybody's at. Okay, cool. I, I designed a whole logo set for Rob. They're all on Discord. 
cool. made him a I made him a logo for his channel. Okay, so nice. Did. Well, All Brian, right, starting up a channel, huh? Good, good. Brian, I want to tell you happy birthday. We celebrated my birthday today. It's in two days from now, but we're gonna. I'm gonna get off. And my phone's about to die. My dad's gotta get ready to head home. So yep. anyway, this is my this is my dad, Ed Barber, by the way. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Hey. So been good to listen to see y'all. Hey, hey two hats. Yeah. Yeah. Take over here. Here, here you go. Not quite as shiny as yours. Oh, <laughs> he's got it going on. <laughs> bald is bald is beautiful. I don't care what the age is, right? <laughs> oh, right. Oh, man, man. Am I cool? Am I cool? Oh yeah, you're cool. Hey, you're cool. <laughs> Dutch guys in the house. All right, guys. Hey, it's nice talking to y'all. Thanks for letting me join. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, man. So Have a good night, out. Redbeard. Yeah. Good night, guys. Good night. I think I hear you. All right. I always like Redbeard. He always like poses questions that like I have to think about. I sure I agree. He asks them or what? But he always poses a question. I have to be like, hmm. Wait until you hang out with him for a few hours. <laughs> I think he's just very naturally um, intriguing about some of the stuff other people are doing. You know, like when you're focused oh, yeah. on everything you're trying to get going, and you're trying to keep out all the, you know, squirrels. Yeah, and then you start hearing the squirrels. You're like, "Holy shit, that sounds really cool and interesting." Squirrel, you know? squirrel, squirrel, right? Yeah, I Brian. I sorry, I, I wasn't able to get on to, uh, and play the game with you, but I told I told Jeff I'd be here for this. And I was like, "Darn, my internet's I, been." Oh, we haven't we haven't played yet. We haven't. Played no, yet. Brian passed out because I had to go get dinner. My internet's been super spotty lately. Like, if you watch on these lives, I, I'm always dropping connection because my internet is garbage. I've been having problems too. I'm, you know, I'm surprised like things went off as well as they did. And I'm going to add Dutch guy um, here. I haven't seen Dutch guy in a while. Hey, man. Hey, he's got, he's, man, I tell you what, for uh, the cool cars he's got, there's Aspen's Valaris and all that. I mean, that stuff is just absolutely cool. Yeah, I know. He said he had, he said he had them old direct connection kits to make yeah. sort of a rear end behind a, Charger or Daytona, the front wheel drive ones. Like, I want me one of them. Yeah, definitely. How you doing, Dutch? Yeah, good. Uh, my work truck's broke down right now, so I'm waiting for a tow truck. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah. I tell you what. Um, Are you on what's the clock? Uh, what happened to it? Uh, the linkage snapped on the transmission. Ooh. My boss wanted me to crawl underneath there and pop it neutral, but I'm sitting at like a 45 degree hill right now, and I don't feel like getting run over. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> better play it safe. We want to see if the No Name National is driving a car or not in a wheelchair. Yeah. Well, I I I just don't care enough to crawl underneath there. So, yeah, <laughs> you, you don't you don't get paid enough for that, right? It's a work truck. Honest. That's above your pay grade. Well, it's it's a twenty foot long box truck, so if it runs me over, it's not going to be light. No, yeah. no, you're going to be flat guy's garage at that point. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, waiting waiting on a tow truck, but the, I'm actually stuck on an Amish farm right now, so there's no electricity or anything no. outside. But they're really nice. They actually brought me like some homemade like cinnamon rolls that are absolutely delicious. So oh yeah, hey, you know Amish are great. They are, and like I. I, I tell you what, like that's hospitality right there. Um, you got good enough signal to join alive. You're getting paid to eat some Amish cinnamon rolls and talk cars, so that's definitely a positive. Yeah, I don't I know. Did change they scare the format me. up a little bit tonight. They scare I, yeah. you? Well, they Brian, don't scare me because when I was a kid, we always we always went to an Amish place that had like all this cool stuff going on. Is down in uh, Arthur, Illinois, Brian. Like my neighbors are Amish, so you know. I did change yeah. up my format a little bit um, at the beginning. I'm going to try to have different people on, you know, like whenever I go live, like two channels, kind of like similar builds. Like uh, Dust Devil will probably reach out to you and be like, "Hey, do one with Travis because it's like the Mopar related." You know, like Jed, carburetor, that would probably be a single one just because uh, of, like, the him intricacy. And tall, hey, him and Tall Oh, John. Tall John. Yeah. Would you yeah, do that, yeah. Jed? Oh, that, you and Tall John? Great. 
That'd be great. I'd watch that for sure. <laughs> It'd just be like one of our phone calls. It would be hilarious, though. It, it would not not like that. It would be just two very knowledgeable get, people get talking. Them, about it would be Boomer Night in two hacks. Getting the two of them going is great. And see, when you, you start talking carburetors, it makes me want to bring out my crown jewel. I finally got one. What makes it special is all the different colored. Ah, it hurt. All the little different colored Venturis. Very cool. Yeah, it's the Barry Grant carburetor with interchangeable Venturi, so you could change the CFM of it at a fly. Whoa, Very nice. fancy. So, here's a question. Dutch is sitting there, bored as hell. How's your cars going? <laughs> well, I got, I got the 43 running. I actually took it out and tested it out the other day. And it pulls good. Um, there's still a little bit. I don't know if the, the thermoquad I got in there is quite enough for it, but I got to do some more monkeying. But it, it in the the transmission is still a little bit of a mystery. I might have to take it out. But now is that a torque flight or is that a 904? It, it's a it's a torque flight 727. But it had a bunch of work done to it, and it. I always run my cars with reverse manual valve bodies, and mainly because I <clears throat> suck at adjusting kickdowns. But uh, I'll have to change that yet. But little things. That car hasn't been on the road since 2002, so it's a learning curve. Yeah, that's definitely going to need a little bit of uh, kind of going through it and getting it all straightened out. That's for sure. Yeah. So that's but, where I'm at. You know, like, you know, Ken made a good point today. I was on the phone with him. He's like, you know, 90% of the build is the last 10% of what you got to do, you know, and you get everything thrown in the car, put together, then it's fine tuning, adjusting suspension, all the electrical gremlins, yeah. all that fun stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, we, we have an autocross race on the 22nd, so I'm, I got to finish so I can get it out there for that. And then we have a uh, street tire shootout the following weekend. So I got to change the gears in it and get it ready to go to that. So, cool very cool but we we just got back from our trip we drove 2400 miles in the 78 aspen and we went all the way down to mobile alabama so that was a fun trip oh that does sound like fun yeah there's a there's a museum down there they have the uss alabama um it's a really famous battleship from world war ii but uh, we actually got invited and i actually got to drive my car up on deck of the ship I saw that. I saw that picture by the cannons. Yeah, cool yeah. That, they that, that one, was that was neat. They let one one car a year up there, and we just so happened to to win the win the draw. So yeah, it was uh, pretty pretty fantastic. The Big Easy Mopar Club puts on the show, and I talk about the most inviting people I've ever met in my life. That is really they wel cool. Welcomed us with open arms and. We had a crawfish boil on deck, so I thought that was pretty cool. I never got to have one of those. So, but yeah, it's funny you brought a big easy. I used to uh, go down. I was just gonna say, uh, Sorry, Brian, you know that uh, that buddy of mine in Tennessee, Billy. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, Billy is supposedly a founding member of the Big Easy Mopar Co Club. Oh, okay. He says they're a bunch of assholes now. <laughs> I uh yeah, no, look at the source. Brian, how's your car come along, buddy? Oh, I really don't want to discuss it right now. I got a price for I you. Had, Brian, by the way. I had some bad 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 news, but I'll talk about that later. Okay. okay. Shop cats in the house. Or zero, have a good night. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, Brian, I'm waiting on some parts and hopefully get good news tomorrow with some things and um, waiting for schedules to align to really start uh, banging out some banging out some progress. You know, we're getting into the spring and summer months where it's nice out and you want to get out and play with it and not be stuck in a hot garage working on stuff all the time. Oh, guys, my tow truck's here, so hate to be short with you, but I'll catch hey, y'all later. Thanks. Hey, Dutch, thanks for joining, man. All yep. right, catch you later. Talk to you later, See man. Ya. That was weird. 
everything went really dark. It did. I was because I was wondering if that was just me. No, it went dark quick. Okay, I thought it, I thought it was just me. So yeah, other than that, it's just been working a lot. Kid stuff, the usual. I sent Jed a picture of an engine I would like him to find me, but it was kind of a joke, so I never be able to afford it at Westlake. <laughs> what if I what if I get you a price on it? I couldn't afford it right now. <laughs> well, you just gotta sell your fucking house. What's hey, more man. important? Hey, your house right now has went up by at least ten percent in value. You pull that fucking equity out, you buy this. <laughs> So I, 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 I bought my house in, um, 2019 when house prices were reasonably low and I bought it probably 30% under market value and I'm sitting on an ass load equity. I just can't do anything right now. Just for the fact that I'm going to have a daughter going into college and, you know, Oh, well, uh, yeah. I, I mean, she can get student loans. You tell her to get a job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, they're gonna forget all. You tell her to hey help yeah. help me. Okay, you tell her to get them student loans right now. Heaven's both parts. Yeah, no shit, right? And that's, that's the whole the thing. I don't want to go man. off on politics. I don't want to go off on politics tonight because I had you know reading the news today was like getting punched in the you know face with by Mike Tyson. But seriously, like the whole cancel the student loan debt is just a segue into free college for everybody and raising taxes. That's all it is. And like, like I said, man, if they're going to do it, you might as well tell her to get while the getting's good. It's... Yeah, I mean, she's she's a junior, so, I mean, she's got a little bit, and she's still got to figure out a bunch of shit. But it'd be kind of cool to be like, hey, instead of, like, going to college, why don't you become a machinist? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's definitely – we definitely need more more of them. They're, they're not... We do. We do. And, uh, uh, yeah, or a plumber. Plumber. She probably actually be better off being a plumber. Electrician. Welder. Welders make good money, up. Yep. Welders make good yep. money. Hey, so Jeff, what did you think? What did you think of that Opel GT I sent you, Jeff? Should have, you should buy it, man. Offer Dude, them it's, like it's it's five hundred dollars. Like, is there a title? Uh, it doesn't say there's not a title, so I'm gonna say yes. I'd offer them like three fifty cash and just you know run with it. I know that's that's one of the that's one of the three cars that I would want to uh, LS swap. Dude, it, it, can't it, much, it can't weigh much anything. Like being like mostly fiberglass, it looks like there's a kid on it of some kind. Hey, we got uh, Nolan in from Wild Rose. Never be a plumber. I don't know. Oh man. yeah, hey Brian, man, I really liked your guys' wide guys thing where you guys did all the different cars and talked about them. That was really cool, man. I like that. You guys did a uh, good job. I, with that. I forgot there's a whole a whole group of people in this list on this on this thing that's never seen us do that before. Yeah, yeah no, it's been like, so long that's since we time. did it. Yeah, that was cool. I was don't know. Cool. So the one thing I thought was cool, it, it, I know it's 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 the butt of the joke, but the wiener wagon thing. Now, if you marketed that right, and I mean you really marketed that right, you would you would sell so many hot dogs, right? And it would be so easy to make money on that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 Barrows, no problem, man. I'll hit you up sometime tomorrow on that. Um, it is motor mount related. I'll just put it that way. Um, but uh, you, you, I mean, if you had. Okay, like where I'm from, there's a downtown area. It's got just a bunch of bars, right, and nightclubs and all that. I am, I'm not kidding, kidding you. There's a hot dog vendor, and this guy is just selling them so much. Lunar, have a good night, buddy. Hopefully, it's warming up out there for you. So yeah, the hot dog thing, the guy with the hot dog cart. I mean, it, it's so easy. He goes out and walks up and down the street. And I think he's got two or three of them now. And uh, you know he's making bank. I don't know how in the hell you'd make that work, Raker. Those are two very, very funky setups. Factory cable shift. Uh, Cornet. But... You'd have to get the, the, the whole cable shift mechanism and everything. I'll get her. 
Brian, are we going to do more? I can't snuck out in the garage. Uh Uh-oh. Don't yeah, do that that's the mean one I was telling. That's the mean one I was telling you about. Don't don't bring kitties into this. My cat's gonna show up. <laughs> She's the mean one, but she likes me. Snuck out. In the I don't know what, what 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 were you thinking? Because I was thinking maybe once a month do a wide guys, but I don't know if that's too. I think that'd be fun. I, don't know. I can sacrifice an afternoon for that. It's just figuring out what we want to. We can talk about it behind closed doors as far as uh, who's going to be the recurring cast and special guests and shit like that. So how did you come up with the idea for that? Just curious. Who wants to answer? I can answer it. I don't know. I might have too much background noise here, but... uh, You don't have um, it. It's quiet. It was... um, What? Me and Jed, whenever I... God damn, how long before we start? Well, we used to sit up all night on the damn phone doing that. We'd be on the phone and sending cars and stuff back and forth on Messenger. And then he found out about, about Discord. Or I, found, I, I, I don't know, you, you already knew about Discord, but I, I, I didn't know you had a Discord. So I started one up and we started doing it in Discord to where we just sent each other stuff. And we were sitting there one night like, well, what? You know, I think I came up with the idea for it. He did, and was like, "Well, why don't why don't we do this on a live?" Because I had done like a, I, I tried to do like a live by myself, and um, then I thought of doing that, and we we brought w- William in on it, and like I can't remember when we did the first one. I'd have to look it up. I think Maybe a lot of it was the fact we had so much fun doing that behind closed doors it's like if we could bring the same energy into a live it'd make a pretty fun show yeah because i don't know i don't know if we're the only i'm pretty sure we're not the only ones that do that if you got another car guy friend and you sit there and just like like be on our, our not even on the phone with them but just send them you, you, you see something cool you send it to them and then they they find something else and they send it to you and um then sometimes you find just out of this world wacky shit like you start looking up donks and you try and one up each other with donks I saw a donk the other day Jed and it was like a uh, oh what were those things called like a Chevy Trailblazer you know Yeah. and you can totally tell it was like this rattle can spray paint job you know like marks like racing stripes taped off with like you know cellophane tape you know and I and I'm pretty sure the wheels were even painted with spray paint because there was shit all over the tires. I'm going, man, I I don't like knocking people's builds, but boy, don't know if they were thinking all that. And the funny thing is, I was leaving my dad's today, and he lives off an old two lane highway that's pretty much just a small stretch that's you know closed down. And like right out of where he lives, I see these tire marks, and this car out in the field. Mind you, it's been raining. And I don't know what this car hit, what it did. The whole front was, like, tore off of it. And as I'm, like, looking and slowing down, this dude's just running down the road. And I'm like, I don't think it'd probably be a good thing to stop and, you know, have him help out. I just looked it up, Jed. July 31st of last year was the first wide guys. Dang. So, um, BNR, um, there is currently – T-shirts being made up. Um, John Wilburn and Dallas Brown are taking care of that through, I want to say it's uh, Bad Tree Productions' cousin, I think, or something like that. And um, the logo I drew up for that, um, I got permission to do that. I just can't market it because it's not my naming rights. So, but yeah. But there is going to be T-shirts made. And I think John said earlier that they're going to be available before for the show they're currently being worked on so and do the same thing with rob with the logo i made him yeah you can have this logo but you can't sell merch with it yeah yep i, I that, sat there while brian were you asleep when rob and i were doing the logo just a minute ago yeah i was asleep i woke up for a minute i was like oh they're doing the logo I'm like okay once they're done talking i'll jump in and say hi and i fell back to sleep 
yeah, I, I got bored last night right before I went to bed and I started making a logo for Rob's YouTube deal. And I spent the last probably hour with him in Discord tweaking his logo in Microsoft Paint. And it turned out pretty fucking killer. We got a bunch of different colors and we're just waiting on which color for him to pick out. Did, did he go with, oh go ahead. Did he did he go with the black and kind of yellowish gold from like the Jags colors or well that that's the only thing he's worried about is he doesn't want that to become a conflict of interest. So he did a bunch of different colors and uh they're all sitting in Discord. I'm looking at his logo right now actually and it's thinking, damn, I wish I could have a logo that looked that cool. <laughs> yeah. I think you should stay with the black and yellow. I like the the last one. Yeah, I reversed them. I like the black and yellow the best, too. It fits them. Jeff, do you have any idea what size tires were on that funny car behind you? Offhand, no, but I can find out for you. How high up? How high up does, are, are those wheel wells cut out? Um, They're up past the body line, aren't they? They're almost they, up to the... Let's go for a little walk. Back corner. Mm, I imagine we're spinning around. Like, we're spinning around. It's probably running like fourteen thirty twos or something like that. So, I mean, it's pretty high up there. Well, here, let me see if I can do something. If you can see this, VNR, who Tom? Which Tom? Okay, Dust Devil. So there is the wheel well. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah, it looks like it all, it's almost cut all the way up to the roof line. So this actually has been added through here. It's actually pretty well open. I feel like it underneath here. So the actual part actually comes to about right here. But just for reference, here is an old E seventy fourteen. <laughs> so it looks, so it looks tiny yeah they were pretty massive tires those old funny car tires were huge man that needs my 31 and a half 15s underneath of it yeah hey brian what would you think of my new car i haven't had a chance to look at it oh what the car you sent me yeah wasn't that the dark yeah, you got it. I thought you already got yeah. it. No, I finally got it. Like, I paid <laughs> for it already, but I finally picked it up. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm excited. Dude, whoever had this thing, dude, they had it. They had, it's, like, all the windows are tinted purple. And mm. I didn't realize it at first because it was dark in the barn. But yeah, I get it out in the sunlight and I wipe some of the dirt off. All the windows are, are tinted purple. I'm like, huh. So I tell you what's cool back in the day, a lot of guys that had the gassers in different cars, they would tent the, the windows like colored, yeah. you know, like it, it, some of that was really, really, really cool looking. Yeah. I was like, this is weird. I got a hold of my brother. I'm like, Hey, you're not going to believe this. He's like, well, I'm like, we well, you know how like your semi, you tinted your, your windows purple. He's like, yeah. I'm like, you know how in your fair lane, you tinted your windows purple. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, and you know how you want to like tint your windows purple on your Ford truck. He's like, yeah. Like, guess what color these windows are tinted in this dart I just got? So, oh, here's God. a question. Speaking of window tint, you ever seen vehicles driving around where everything's just, like, completely black? Oh, yeah. yeah. How, can, how can you see out of the windshield? You can't. You can't. I'm going to tell you right now. I, I got a spare door uh, out of the junkyard for my car. I hit a deer, took the mirror off, and the door handle. And the window is tinted. It's not even tinted that dark. I put that thing out. I can't see shit out of it. I'm, I'm going to get pulled over just because they can't see who the fuck's driving. I went into work the other day, and, like, I, I pulled in, and I parked where kind of, like, this entranceway is underground to, like, maintenance stuff. And there's it's, like, a contractor truck. And it was a newer white Ford, and it was super nice. And super clean, not, no rust, nice wheels. You know, it was actually leveled. Like, somebody actually has this work truck that's, like, pimp, right? And every single window on it was just jet black. And I'm going, how in the hell do you see out of that thing? I don't know. I don't know how they don't get pulled over. The cops are assholes about it around here. We got, uh, I, the only problem I have, the only time I have problems seeing us at night is you have problems seeing out of the pretty dark. The one, the windows were tinted on our, our charger, but I think 
it got in an accident at one time and they fixed it. They didn't tent the passenger. They didn't retent the passenger window. Yeah. So, but the driver's side windows tinted. And I don't have any problems seeing out of it unless it's at night. But I couldn't imagine the windshield being tinted. The yeah. windshield's tinted on that dart, isn't it? Uh, I think like just the top is. But like oh, the back okay, window, I was looking at the, the back picture. Window, it looks like it. It, it looks like it's dude. Tinted. It might be. It's so fucking. It has so much barn dust on it. I can't tell. But like the back window, the side windows, uh, the driver and passenger door window, they're all tinted. Yeah. Now, are you sure it's actually purple and it's not like that tint from like the '80s where it was dark and then it changed to purple? <laughs> dude, it. I, all I know is why I, I looked in the car, and this is why I know is I was looking in the car and I looked at the back window, and there's this purple light coming in. That's Sorry, what it get... is. It's, it's that old tent. It's it's it's, it's old window tent. So really that's a good stuff. point, Jed, because I remember like as a kid, my mom, do you remember the Chevy celebrities? Does anybody remember those things? It was like a Eurosport because it had like some funky trim package on it, like a sunroof. And she had it for a long time, but I remember she had some light window tent put on it. But you're right. It like changed colors and like faded like top to bottom or something after I don't know how many years. It just looked like absolute shit. That's yeah, it's great. Weird. I'll, I'll have to look at it. Then it turns cool. to a purple color, which is kind of weird. It's definitely purple. Definitely Ari makes, purple. Ari makes a good point. Only 80s 10 I know about is the grandpa's glasses. Really popular in the 70s, too. Uh, my dad's what? dad, he the passed car, away years ago, but they were always the tent. The car has a license plate on it. It was last on the road in 92. So Damn. a yeah, lot, so that, so that, a lot that, could have happened tent, to that car. That tent was put on in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. You should yeah. you should throw a picture up of it. You should you should share the picture and have uh and throw it up there. I sent it to Jeff, I think. Jeff, you you can pull it up. I can't because the way oh, I'm doing yeah. this. All right, bad. well, hold on. I can I can I know how to do this. I've done this before. Uh share. Let me pull it up on my screen first. Uh do 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 yes. Got to keep that rose tent. Keep it alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh, there it is. Click that. Leave page. There we go. Okay. Share. I, I still think you screen. ought to paint the car Moulin Rouge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I want to share my entire screen. Allow. And then it should do it eventually, I think. Yeah, it's coming through. Yeah. If I can figure out how to fucking work this damn thing. Here we go. There, there it is. You guys see that? Whoa. <clears throat> okay. Oh wow, that thing looks clean. What I was looking at, the quarters are real nice. On oh there. yeah, there's there's one spot on the on this side as you can see, and there's one spot on the other side a little lower. Well, that, that that spot that spot up on the top. Yeah. And really, all 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 that around the edge of that wheel well. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't care about that because that's right where I would cut out for the big. For the hemi the wheel. Of that's it. right. Yeah. 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 Um, but I'm, this is what I want to build that that four fifty one for. Oh, dude. That'd be cool. I know. It'd be cool. <clears throat> that's what. And uh, I I didn't show you guys the hood. Uh, let's see. Where where would I find? Who I sent a picture to Jeff. Uh, it came with a, a hood. Uh, here somewhere i don't know it, it's somewhere but it came with a really cool hood uh for for a tunnel ram like that's what the hood's for is to fit a tunnel ram so yeah like you know i may have a set of headers for sale for, for just for that but I, I i got i picked this up for two grand i thought that was a oh dude you stole that oh uh oh oh we lost him <laughs> oh yeah he uh he booted he took a dump. Up. He was talking about having internet issues earlier. Yeah, he probably Wait clicked on. the wrong thing to leave. To, to, he probably clicked the wrong thing to make the picture go away. So, Brian, you said you had something going on with your car. What's going on? Oh, I went to go pick up a motor. I was supposed to pick up a motor today, and my truck took a crap on the way, like just, just before I left. And I wasn't able to get that motor, and with the way money is i don't have the money to fix my truck and get a motor so i'm having to find a motor i'm having to go back with a different plan so i may actually be building a small block for it but eh. which 
You won't have to build one if we can if we can make things right, Brian. But I don't want to hash out business details on a live hangout. Well, yeah. Federales might be listening. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> I know you did. You you mentioned that before you left and before I fell asleep and I went to a, a bunch of your old uh, videos on that and Feder- wanted to see how that car sounded. And yeah, okay. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I've actually got some uh, fresh clips of the car running that uh, aren't on the tube of you. <laughs> I mean, do you want this to be a secret, Brian? Or I, mean, I don't. Really yeah, care. let's 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 make the deal first. Okay, and then we'll uh, we'll figure something out. I think I think we'll be able to figure that out. <laughs> I think between you and me, I think we got enough parts we can horse trade and come up with any kind of difference of price. Listen to us being all cryptic. <laughs> it's like an Edgar Allan Poe. Jeff, I wanted to let you know. So you've got a Cordoba bunny car behind you. Yeah. Now that's a Cordoba, not a Charger, right? It's a, actually it. Okay. They say it's a Charger, but when you look at it, it screams Cordoba. It's a goddamn Cordoba. All right. I'm saying Cordoba. <laughs> Let's just call it a Cordoba because I, I I shared your deal. And someone's like, I thought that was a Charger. And it's like, uh, I know there was a Charger in that era, but God dang, it's the same car. But regardless, um, I talked to my buddy Tom Roseman with Cackle yeah. Fast Engines and shit, Hemis. Yeah. And we can come up with something if you if that's down the road. And definitely, definitely we need to talk on that then. Yeah. Because I know, I know like um, once I get a little more progress on my car and when I'm in my free time mode, I've been – talking to a few people to get the body going you know and um that's the first step obviously and i have not gone and looked up at that other chassis yet but as far as a lot of other stuff yeah we're gonna definitely need to talk so uh cool that that engine was a blower engine right yeah okay that's all i needed to be reminded of because i know we were talking about different funny cars of the era and not all the funny cars ran blower some of them were hillborn injected eight stack and so those ran like... in B, I think. <clears throat> now you got to remember. So, like, the only thing bad about this era for Norm is he didn't actually own the car. He was sponsoring stuff. Gary Dyer and Kenny Safford did. And the from what I've gathered and talked to Norm about and talked to a couple other people about was when everyone else was going to much bigger cubic inch engines and aftermarket blocks a lot of cases they were still running 426 based stuff yeah it would be more than likely just a 426 now so uh roseman has a couple of different options and they can come to you in whatever form but i know he's got the per like right now he's got one he calls quasimodo and it's literally the perfect block to turn into a cackle fest engine it's got just enough issues you can't make it streetable really right but it's perfect for cackle fest. Put it See, on that, a that would nitro. be perfect. I have a stupid. I have that a would stupid be perfect, car. Jed. Yeah. Couldn't like I don't know how much you guys are planning on spending on this cackle hemi thing. I don't know. But couldn't you like get a set of them hemi heads that go on a 440 and just kind of fake it? People would know it pretty quick. Yeah, the this well, and see, this is the stage five conversion heads, which is from stage five. They make really good stuff. I have a set of the rocker arms, it's really expensive. Like that conversion head is not cheap. I think you start out at like ten or twelve thousand dollars. Well, where, yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I mean, I don't know, and I don't know what you're gonna have in a Hemi too by the time it's all said and done. So, see, you know, like, I, I know my you know. buddy does have some Hemi parts, I don't know what they are. Or if they're even any good, you know. That's the and, big question. You know, yes, that's the big question. And you know, if you're building a cackle engine on a little bit of nitro, you're not out there beating on it five, six thousand RPMs. You want it to fire, not explode, not detonate, and just run and just whack the throttle every once in a while. 
And as far as all the Hemi people I know, I know a lot of good people in uh, the Mopar world as far as Hemis go. You're probably not going to find a better deal and better engine than through Roseman in St. Louis. Yeah. So there's a lot of people I can hook you up with. Like I know blocks in fucking Chicago, all over the States. But if I'm going to lead you to one of the guys I know, it's going to be Tom in St. Louis. Do you know a guy in Australia, uh, Rue Man? I don't know that. I do know a Kevin McLean down in, I think he's in New Zealand, actually. He's There's a, big, a Most of us are dual plug Hemi nuts. We have like yeah. a little club. There's a guy that my machine has dealt with for years and did a lot of drag sure with for stuff for years. And he's, he was from Australia, moved to the States, did drag racing for a long time. He was a chassis builder. And he's back in Australia now. And um, long story short, he's got a bunch of stuff still over here. And I don't even know what it is. It might, I'm going to get more info on it tomorrow, but he's not coming back to the States Ooh. like he had planned. He's just staying over there. So I have no idea what he's got or if it's even affordable or, or you know, anything like that. Streetcar Chronicles, what's going on, man? Well, if you come across a block that's streetable, I am now looking for a block. Okay. And if I don't there find was, one, I will buy a brand new one. There was just a block on my local Facebook marketplace, and it's fucking gone. So I thought there was recently somebody that had for sale uh, a warranty block. Who was talking I don't want, about that? I don't want nothing like that. You're starting to talk about nine thousand dollars. Yeah. I, um. What do we have going on in the background there? Uh, well, Streetcar. Black is block is cheaper than that, ain't it? Jesus. Keith Black is seventy five hundred. Are they? Yeah. So we were just talking about that streetcar. That is a funny car body from Kenny Safford's uh, Mr. Norm Supercharger funny car. Whenever I get the time. <sighs> It's going to be like six grand last time I looked. Jesus. <clears throat> um, so Keith Black is no longer really a business. It's just a name. It's a name. Ken Black is the son. Ken doesn't do anything really. Um, and nor should you do anything with Ken where you're likely to lose your money. Ask, ask me how yeah. my buddy Tom knows. Um, the only way to really get a Keith Black block is through uh, for him. He's only. Um, they sell the, uh, the Keith Black stuff. It's $7,500 for a block. Um, you can get an indie block. I've got all the notes where you can get blocks from. As far as aluminum blocks, you have Bill Mitchell, Indy, and for him, he's only. And then if you want an iron block, Cali's is the only other option. Yeah, maybe Bill Mitchell was the block I've seen that was less. That's remember. like sixty one or sixty two hundred, and yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That that's my right. favorite block, but the wait is like two or three years. No shit, it's so, crazy. I talked to Bill when I was on my last big uh, uh, kick to build a Hemi. You know what? Real quick, not to interrupt, Jed, but Ari says talking to somebody, but says just. Just drove the old heap home. He's got a cool Chevy truck. Tesla's, Porsches, and every kind of Beamer passing me, LOL. But you're driving in style. Just saying. Who gives a shit how fast you're going? Those guys are in a hurry to get to Starbucks, go home, watch their Netflix, whatever. You're driving in style. That's all I got to say back. about that. Um, I do have access to a... Hemi block. It's it's been filled. It was a it was an over the counter like race block. All right, all right. I found it. I knew there was a damn Hemi block somewhere. Here it is. It is twenty five hundred for the block. Says sixty six four twenty six Hemi block and parts. Really? Yeah. Uh, let's see. It says twenty five for the block. Various prices for okay, so the, the other shits more. Or extra, but twenty five hundred for the block. Uh, various prices for the intake, oil pan, pistons, head bolts, plug wires. It says the block does need some repair. Maybe, possibly, two sleeves. Uh, and looking at the block, it doesn't look like there's any repairs on the skirt. So I don't think it's been windowed. But then again, there's only two pictures. So, yeah. 
So I don't so, know if that's a good price or not. We'll have to ask Jed. Let's ask Jed. What? Tell Jed what you just saw there and also. All right. All right. So I, I yeah. knew there was a, lo a block local on my Facebook marketplace. And I finally found it. Uh, it's a 1966 426 block. He wants 2500 bucks for it. Uh, he, he has a bunch of extra shit that you can buy too. And he says it might need two of the holes look iffy. They probably need sleeved. And uh, I don't see any repairs. It doesn't look like it's been windowed or anything. $2,500. I get real fucking skeptical. Like I'm like yeah, you got to look really close because I mean I'm just saying like I can go check it out. It's local to me, but it's it's here. It, I'm looking at it. It looks I, said, I don't see any repairs from the pictures, but you know I could be so, so, uh, I mean, that might be something. I don't know repairs that you can see. Not to worry. So there's there's two things on a Hemi block that kill it. Yeah, I mean make it scrap weight. Right. One is deck height. Okay. A lot of racers would literally take the blocks and take almost what is it, half an inch right off the deck surface. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Um my buddy Jesse had a block, so standard deck height on a Hemi, which same as 440 is 10.720. He had a block and it measured uh uh oh, let me see. Roseman's got a block that's cut even more. But Jesse's block was like 10 point it was right at uh shit what would that have been almost it was a little more than a quarter inch taken off the deck holy shit on jesse's block and so that'll kill it because that deck service is what holds the whole top of the block together that's the only right. thing tying your cylinders and everything together so when you start weakening that you lose block integrity um so that'll hurt it but main cracks. Yeah, for sure. Like it needs yeah. it needs checked. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, guys, like I, I knew I'd seen one and I, I figured I'd find it. I can like share, you know, if I don't hit the wrong you button can again. Put, you can share it to my Facebook. I need to probably be friends with you anyways. Yeah, I yeah, like that's you, a good you know. idea. You you don't you don't irritate the fuck out of me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anymore? Oh no. <laughs> that means I did. That, that don't make me feel great. Yeah, no, you were, no. You, hey, you gotta, you gotta realize he, you irritated the fuck out of him. But I think you proved your point on some things, and now he doesn't hate you or want to turn you into a skin suit. Yeah, you were. No, you I were, think you, you were pretty bad when, when, when you first started coming around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not bad. I'm just fucking with you. Oh, dude, you're perfectly <laughs> fine. Uh, now, nah, don't go crazy. Don't say perfectly fine. <laughs> I know. I still like Chevy. You, um, you, yeah, you got to give a guy credit that's going to cut that head, those heads up like that and do what he's doing. It takes oh, see, that, it, That's one of the things I love. It takes some madness. You know, it really does. Like, you know, if you look at some of the crazy shit people have done, you got to be a little bit mad. You know, it's like, what was the, uh, bu -bu -bu um, was it Willy Wonka? Not Willy Wonka. We're all a little mad in here. That Mad Hatter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, man, like my thought process on it was everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Like they all have different stuff, but they're all basically they're all working on their car. They're all doing this. They're all doing that. They're all have problems. Like, how am I going to stick out a little bit to get my subs? Right. And I was like, yeah. this is it. This is this is good. This is the thing. And I got over 100 subs in two days because of that one video. So, yeah. Yeah. Where are you at on subs right now? Oh, yeah. Uh, I just hit 400 as of tonight. Oh, you got it. You got yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah. got it. I think there's a whole lot of guys that are going to really start nailing it. I really do. No, oh, no. We can't add each other, Ken. Why? Because you and I both have private settings on Facebook. Oh, geez. Yeah, probably. Let, What's that mean? Send it to me, Ken. Send it I'll to share me. to you. You. Yeah, okay. Good idea. All right. Share in. Send a messenger. And then we got to find old Brian. Jeff, I had Brian. to make my Facebook... Uh, to where only friends of friends can add me because I was getting countless friend requests every day because of the YouTube deal. There you go, Brian. Oh, you got yeah. it, buddy. And even though it. I've changed it to that, I still got about 300 pending friend requests from people. And I don't like my Facebook ever being more than like 500 people. Yeah. And it's almost well, 700. And all I am. I don't have. Like, I don't have Facebook. Like I, you know, like I probably will do something car related. I've been 
you know, on that. But like my dad and I had the same name, right? And like people from YouTube have been trying to friend my dad, thinking it's me. Ah. And he's like, "Hey, do you know so and so?" I'm like, "Oh, that's a that's a car guy from YouTube," and he's just like, "Oh." Brian, Ooh. we're 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 friends on Facebook now, right, Brian? I think I added you. Like, I wouldn't mind it if the people would just send me a, a message and be like, "Hey, can we be friends?" All right, let me look at these photos. Like I said, I'm looking at the one that he might be showing a repair. I I can't fucking tell. He doesn't say what what he it's a picture of. Yep. It's just a picture. So Ari, Ari, you know, you're not slow. You're you're just cruising, man. You got. You said you got two cars and twelve cylinders. Well, it's better than yeah, you know, one car on jack stands. Like half of us right now. <laughs> yeah, it's been windowed by the cross bolts, which is real normal. I was gonna say, the more I looked at that picture, the more I thought that that's probably what it was. I can't see the deck height issue. So, speaking of stuff like Patrick, if he if he he starts doing that that head for that that slant, like yo. I'm gonna be. He sent jealous. me a picture. He sent. Me I'm a gonna be. Je- he did. I want to see yeah. a picture when you get a chance. You need to send it to me or, or something. It's it's pretty neat. Like there's some stuff that's off, but it's it's definitely doable. And you know he's one of those engineering CAD designer yeah, he style seems like guys. Like a guy that could like figure it all out before he even makes yeah. it. Yeah. But so like street was, car. Yeah. Oh, street man. car. Same with me. Be disgusting. Dude, it it, it it would be absolutely disgusting. All right, what do you think, Jed? Be... What's your what's your uh. What's your reckoning? I reckon I sent the guy a message. I need to see the mains and I need to see the block, front of the block because I can check deck height just by visually inspecting and I can tell how much has been taken off just by looking at the front of it. Gotcha. There's a couple of things that Chrysler actually gave people to go off of for checking things like that. So I sent the guy a message. I need to see those. If all yeah, check, if well, uh, I can look I like can... the pad where the, where, where the pad is. No, no, where the not, numbers are. The it doesn't look like that's been cut. It's, like it's if not it, the pad you got to worry about. Let's see. Like I, I can fear. I can pick it up for you though if you guys end up working out a deal or some or just whatever, and I can throw it on a fastenal pallet and get it to you cheap. That's Jed's what I was end thinking. up getting that block for like seven hundred and fifty bucks. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, maybe he watched the channel. Like he might like get all like, oh shit, I'm gonna raise the price. <laughs> Jeff, share my screen, damn it. Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to, like, I'm just I'm trying to get some stuff ready for the morning. It should be adding here pretty soon. Come on. Teaching. Okay. So here we have your garden variety. <gasps> God oh. dang it. <laughs> Technical <laughs> issues. Okay. So here we have your garden variety pro stock hemi. All right. So obviously they're real common for blowing out on the side. Right. That's really not a big deal. It really isn't. <clears throat> That's common, actually. So this lip right here, this is what you look at to tell deck height how much has been taken off. Okay. There are all blocks out there where you can't even see this lip anymore. That's a quarter inch of material is what's supposed to be there. Jeez, that's just oh. crazy they just take that much off. They do that to up the compression ratio. Instead right, of buying yeah. good pistons, they just take it right off of there. That's and a waste, man. It is. It's a complete fucking waste, and it ruins a block. So uh, this block, for being what it is, where they freaking mutilated the sides of it and stuff, they didn't touch the deck height. It's still standard. Well, they yeah, what is, what is up with that cover there on the huh. on the side there? Yeah. What, what are, the, what are wanna, they doing wanna, there? You want to see more of that? Let's see. We can't. You're giving away Rob Z's new logo. I was going to say that logo's tight, by the way. Oh, thank you. Let's see. The disc tube. Hey, good job there. Heavens 347. Getting closer. I did put a link to his page in the chat. Oh, we were talking about priority main oiling earlier. Yeah. I just want to touch on that. Um, This is the Keith Black iron block I had. This is priority main oiling from Keith Black. It's a set of special main stud bolts that have oil that come off the oil pump, run all the way around, and it feeds oil directly into the mains. That's kind of oh, that nutty. looks cool as hell, though. Yeah, that it? that's nutty, though. 
like yeah. Oh, and here's here's another thing for deck height. See this lip and this yeah. lip? That means you got a virgin block. However, this block was filled. So it was filled uh three quarters of the way, which actually is still perfectly streetable because the combustion's only happening at this point. Right. So if you fill it up to that point and water's still right there, it could still be streetable. But this block was dead because of that. Yeah, one lifter bar was blown out and this one was damaged. Eesh. But the guy who bought it really needed a 1970 date coated block. That's what this is. And he's fixing it. I cut a chunk out of a 3D3 block to fix this. And he's got lifter boss pieces to repair it. It'll be lock and stitched and fixed. That's, I mean, good, good on him for bringing it back, I guess. That's cool. Well, I sold it to him for like 700 bucks. Because it was worth seven hundred dollars to me as a freaking display piece, right? Oh, there we go. It is cool. Oh, is this is this the one you called the world's cheapest four twenty six? Whatever you did that video on it, is this that one? That was what it was going to be, and then it turned into a restoration. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That's uh, just I crazy. I always wondered how much you paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I didn't pay nothing for the block. Oh no, <laughs> shit. Did. I traded a pair of valve covers for the block. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I just had to, to drive it. to Chicago. Oof. So what had happened is, and, you know, it's all speculation, but this block is a real 68 block out of a Barracuda. But all the numbers are wiped off of it. It's just, I mean, it's mostly speculation, but the story's good enough. It's been relayed to me enough through different people that it's true to me. So I'm imagining what happened was, this block was in its Barracuda and they left water in it and it froze and it broke mm -hmm. out here. And then on the other side, it broke out in the same place. Shit. I don't have that photo. That's Thomas. That's our business agreement. But uh, it broke out on both sides and these are actual cylinders. Kind of cool to see those. But uh, then I imagine what they did is like, well, we can't waste this block. So they literally, they milled it. They machined all this material and uh, took, made it into a pro stock engine. And they kept it in the same little Barracuda, little 68 Barracuda. Man. And then some... Rick, oh, go ahead, Jeff. Raker's asking who you got the block from. Uh, it's my buddy, Thomas Bryan. He lives in Genoa. Um, the block, I imagine it and the car lived its entire, they're both lived in Illinois, probably most of their life. I don't know a whole heck of a lot. And actually on the same trip is when I bought the, the dual plug heads, they were only about 20 miles away from the engine. Oh yeah. Here we go. So there's that side. And this is the other side. They actually cut this part. Man. So you got a commie liberal block. <laughs> yeah. in, in I'd, I'd say there's probably quite a few percentage of the Hemis that were sold new in Kami, Illinois. Yeah. Well, and then you look at the bores, you can actually see where the intake valve, it had huge intake valves. They actually notched the bores. And these lifter bores are bored 30 thousandths oversized for a bigger diameter lifter for more surface area. Man, that, then, that, that engine, if it could, if it could talk, man, Jesus. I wish it could because I want another story on the dark blue glip tall. Yeah, that's as odd. As I know. You know, you know what that engine would say if it could talk? Ow, ow, <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> it would say in me, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the whole thing with the dark blue glip tall that really question that makes me wonder is there was really only a race team who was known for using dark blue glip tall. And yeah, I, didn't even know, I didn't even know you could get that shit in blue. I thought it was just red. That's what I thought. Or whatever that color is, uh, you know. Like rust dark red, dark red, red yeah. whatever it is. Burgundy. No, there's the uh, the hoop nab on that. But uh, I will say this. Uh, I have the heads. And now I need a block. So I can use these. So now, what are you going to put that in? I don't a know. Thunderbird. <laughs> I'm thinking about <laughs> ripping the uh, 
505 out of Jezebel. We're taking the 451 out of the satellite. You end up doing both. That satellite's cool, by the way. You put the Hemi in Jezebel. You take the motor out of Jezebel and put it in the satellite. With the automatic. Now, you just need to get a new car to put it in. <laughs> oh, God. R- Raker makes a good point there. Sox Martins used blue glyptol. That's what I was getting at, yeah. And that was, was up in the Barracuda. Of, that was in their neck of the woods. Yeah. I'm not saying it was a Sox Martin engine, but it could have been built by them. So they built so many cars and engines, and you know it could have very well been. Jake King well, might have had his hands all over that one. Well, here's the here's some interesting stuff for you guys. Uh, so there's two like so. How do I even begin this? Uh, Sox and Martin, obviously, lots apart from them. Oh, Genoa, Illinois, not Italy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's a lot of Sox and Martin shit that floats around in the aftermarket. So Sox and Martin, they had a way of uh, identifying the parts for them and parts for customers. So if you ever, like, I had a pair of dual plug aluminum Hemi heads that were from Sox and Martin. If it is stamped Sox and Martin all written out or with an and symbol, that is from them to a customer. If it is S.M., that is a part for them. That was from one of their cars. Oh, yeah, I know about that. Being our, um, if it's the same guy, um, back in the early two thousands, he had, um, kind of an old machine shop looking building and dirt floors. And there was a Superbird, a Daytona and a GTS three, three, four speed 68 dart along with a bunch of beat up nose cones and wings hanging on the wall. And he was a Ford mechanic. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jeff! There's supposed to be some big nostalgia race going on at uh, down at Gateway tomorrow and Saturday. <sighs> if I didn't have so much shit I need to do, Brian, I'd be there in a heartbeat. Is this still going to be? I mean, yeah, what's me your too. weather like though down there? Uh, I think rain. it's supposed to be nice tomorrow. Let me look. I was gonna say I got a big swap meet I got to go to tomorrow. Ooh, I got elephant ears, but they're not from S and M. How in the hell did you Saturday get Saturday? Would be the day to go to the race. It's Friday, looking rainy. Yep. I need to check my weather too, so I know if I'm going to swamp meet tomorrow. It's been buckets of rain here. Same here. It rained all day yesterday, all day today. I think this weekend. Pretty sure there's a swap meet going on in uh, Michigan. Ooh, C10 in Mexico, if no one stole it. Sweet, no rain tomorrow. It's going to be muddy as fuck, though. Yeah, it's it's been pouring here, like (laughs) just pouring. That's this time of the year, though. I mean, I'm honestly glad I don't have my car done right now because I'd be wanting to take it to the track and this time of year every weekend it rains it can be nice all week and every yep. weekend it rains well we've been getting like oh during the like right now it's been raining during the week but it's like every weekend we have where it didn't rain it's cold yeah I, I stopped by my shop whenever I was leaving out today and had to grab a few things out of there and oh my god it's like the Poseidon adventure in my shop I'm going to have to go tomorrow and What's above you? Oh, uh, air. No, I it's mean, a, like, in, is it like what kind of roof? It's a flat roof. Can you just go up there and tar the shit out of it? I got there's this crackhead in the, in the neighborhood. I'm going to have to do that for me so probably sometime this summer. <laughs> well, 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 well crackheads if you can't long. make them do uh, if you can't make them do manual labor. No, no, that's what they're good for, man. This, you know, as long as it's not too complicated, they'll get her done. Let's see. That's true. Yeah. My buddy Thomas, he had a mint brand new in the crate, 426 block from Opar. And uh, he was going to put that in his dart. And same guy bought the Pro Stock block from or traded for. 
and uh, he ended up selling it because Indy Cylinder had promised him he would get a block from them, an iron one, for like half the price. So he sold his mint block for $9,500. I'd say it was pretty cool. Um, my mom's cousin, big, always has been a big gearhead, never had kids, never got married, always had a good job. And back then, he would always have fast cars, right? The expensive ones. And he was the type of guy back then that would just see something for sale, cheap or whatever, like late 60s, early 70s to the 70s, and just buy it. And he would just stash it away, right? And he has a 68 Dart Hemi recreation clone. It's not done right, but it's it's pretty neat. But uh, he's a Chevy GM guy, and but he always had Mopars. And back in the 60s, I want to say, say like 66 or 67, he bought one of the first year super stock Hemis that was pulled out of the car for something else. And he still freaking has, it's complete man. Wow. Cross Ram everything. Yeah. Of course he won't give nothing up like literally nothing. And he's the type of guy. He just buy Like the last car he did was a, it was a pretty neat Impala and he just fixed what was needed to be fixed on it and just parked it in his building. And it's like, come on, man. But when I saw that engine jet, I was like, is that what I think it is? And he's like, and he, tell, he told me the story. He had plans to put in something, never happened. He got rid of that car, got a Nova, which was a Nikki 427 Nova. That'd and cool. yeah, he bought it brand new. You know, I'm sitting here going, man. And he was the smart one. So he got drafted for Vietnam and didn't sell his stuff. He had a good friend who he's still like best friends with, made sure he took care of his cars. You know when he was overseas that is smart yeah of course nobody really knew these things would ever do what they're doing now no they didn't you know there's a there's a name of a guy and a number i want to give you jed i just need to talk to him first he owned a local like napa automotive center you know like one of the franchise type places and he started off years and years ago working out of this small shop that's actually behind it and it is full of Hemi stuff. Ooh. He bought a 69 Coronet RT Hemi four-speed car. And years ago, had a 383 in it because the guy blew it up. But had, I mean, he's been collecting shit. He did for years. And it's all just sitting in there. And if he doesn't mind, I'll talk to him. I don't know <clears throat> if and when he'd be willing to sell. But he's got a lot. I want a block. Oh, I know he's got blocks in there. I, I need a block for my uh my Hemi Dream. I've got everything stashed back to build two four twenty sixes. One is to finish the pro stock and one is to build a street one for me. Yeah. See if I think if I had the money to do something like that, I would love to have a sixty eight Hemi Dart. Right. Yeah. And make it streetable ish. Because those things are, that that car is just wicked. Just absolutely wicked. I'm more of a Barracuda guy. Yeah. But they're both fucking badass. I mean, it's it's a true piece oh, yeah. of history right there. Yeah, because, you know, rules were changing. And, you know, once again, Chrysler just set the world on fire. You know, they looked at the rules and said, okay. I mean, hell, they didn't even paint the damn things. You yeah. know? It's like they, they knew it was going to get painted and... The engineering behind it at Hearst Campbell. Oh, we need to make room. We're going to sledgehammer this side in. You know. Oh yeah, the uh, the the brake booster thing doesn't fit. Well, we're just going to move it over. You know, and just steel wheels and that right there just shows you like they were super serious about winning and racing because they only had one percent of the market. Yeah. So if they were going to sell cars, that's the way to do it. Well, it's kind of the same thing they're going through right now. They they went through a phase where they just went absolutely ape shit crazy, and then when that ended, they just totally dropped out of it. It's like, nope, no more performance. And then you know, it took how many years to come back around? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Ari said his uh, pops bought a '72 when he first immigrated. He likes Novas uh, from Iran in '76. When my mom, grandma, and grandpa immigrated from. 
uh, Eastern Europe um, in the 60s. My grandpa said it like when he got here, uh, one of his first cars he had, he always had Chevys after this. It was a, it was a 59 Impala 348 automatic four door. It was like a dark Brown, like a red interior. He showed me a picture of it. It was kind of neat. And then he had saved up his money and bought a Impala SS that was blue. And that was supposed to be my mom's like first car, but it got crashed. Mm. Always had Chevy Novas and after that, after that. And, That'd be cool, Raker. Yeah, that would be. I tell you what I really like is, do you guys remember, it would have been 63, 64, it was a radio station out in California that did the 426 wedge-powered truck. It had a real low stance in the back. I never heard of it. Uh, No. I'll have to find that and send it to you guys. It's actually pretty neat. Heaven's Mopar. When my dad went to Vietnam, his dad and my grandma sold his car for 50 bucks without him knowing it. When dad returned and found out he wasn't very happy, he had some, oh, man. Yeah. Oof. Well, uh, Scott, that's probably why he has that whole field full of cars now. What I saw <laughs> in that one video of yours. I'd be the same way. I'd be like, nope, I'm buying all this stuff back. And more ain't never getting rid of nothing. You know, what's crazy about that. So Norm told me like Norm's a vet. He was Korean war era. And he told me that like, you know, he had a, obviously a bunch of guys from Chicago went over to Vietnam and he made sure that they wouldn't lose their cars. Like if they couldn't make payments or something um, would send over there decals like he had showed me a couple of pictures of like a tank or an armored personnel carrier jeep had the grand spalding decal on the back holding up a sports club shirt you know and it's, it's pretty neat because if you look at the that era you know obviously they were sending the playboy playboy girls over there bands you know doing all that and then you know ford did that supercharged mustang there was two of them made uh, bill girl Bo- bill goldberg owns one of them the other one got crushed on accident and they were running it on an airstrip and it's like, man, that is absolutely really cool stuff. Oh yeah, I remember seeing the uh, the um, um, auction uh, where that that one got sold, and everybody was all secretive about who bought it. And somebody had somebody accidentally said Goldberg in that in that broadcast, and I was like, oh, because I thought yeah. that car was cool as hell. Yeah, I it was definitely. Thing. Yeah, that thing is bad fucking ass. It's hard not to like it, even if you're not a Ford guy, because what they did with it was like, oh, we're going to make a street funny car. You know, they had all the just 60s vibe of just killer. Boy, that might be why somebody is asking how high up those wheel wells are cut too. somebody might be wanting to make a street funny car. Uh, Well, I can I can do some measuring for me or for you. And uh like, are you want to know, like, well, here, let me get a tape measure out. I just, my whole idea is how cool would it be if somebody was to find a Cordoba and basically, except for the the Mr. Norm livery and stuff, you know, on yeah. it, but just build something like that and take it to the track and basically steel roof and quarters for him. So at the bottom, Brian, the absolute bottom of the fenders, wheel well to wheel well opening is 39 inches. Jeez. So that's huge, that right? Was, oh, my God. What size tire did they have? On? Well, they probably had the dragster, the same tires that the dragsters had. Well, from the inside of the 10, okay. from the inside of the 10, and if I'm looking at the corner, kind of center line to the axle, um, to the inside of the fiberglass is 22 inches. Sounds about right. So let me see if I can't get that, like a, a view of this for you here. There's some thin spots in here. So shit. It's kind of amazing how you can see, is that light coming through the fiberglass? That's light coming through there. 
You yeah, can't tell me there's not a guy that knows fiberglass that can't go in and repair every inch of that. Oh, I've already. So you see how the wheel well was added in there? Yeah. Yeah. So that's like the original, and that was added in. That's going to get cut out. You know, obviously. Uh, I've got yeah, a picture. I've got, I've got a picture of the original up on my on my screen right now. <laughs> so, like, here is inside. Ooh. That's like the view, like where the head would be. That is so cool. Can you imagine driving that? That had to be some scary shit, right there. It had to have been fun. I mean, here you go. The parachute thing is still in there. Yeah. I mean, it's all rusted and jacked up, but you know. That's just cool. I mean, that's just you got a you got a legitimate piece of history in your garage there. I know. I think it's cool as hell. So I do agree with Raker. I don't think those. Well, he just deleted his comment, but I don't think those wheel wells were quite as big as they are now. No. Well, I mean, from at the bottom, they at the bottom it hasn't been altered. Okay. Well, because I mean, I can show you that. So like. Yeah, but you know what? That's another thing too. You got to think those See, drag slicks. You ever look at the drag the slicks on a dragster? How when they're doing the burnout, they get skinnier and bigger yeah. out this way. So they had to have room for all that expansion. Yeah. So yeah, I could see that. This is all still rubber up in there. That's rubber. Oh, that's, so that's cool. all rubber up in there. So even in its sand drag days it was still nail and rubber. And like, like right here where my hands at, that's part of the inner wheel. Well, where that shouldn't be exploded like that. So obviously yeah. something blew up. And you know, that the kind scary of sucks. That kind of sucks. They use it as a sand dragster too, though, because I mean, yeah. think of the, think of the damage that did. That's like sandblasting the, the bottom side of it every time. Oh, it totally did damage to it, you know? And, that's probably why some of this stuff underneath here is thin. Now, yeah. I think what's going to have to happen is it's going to have to be flipped upside down and reinforced from the bottom. Oh yeah, yeah. But I still think you get a, you 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 get a, an old school guy. He could get in there and do that. Like that, I saw on the front was so weak and it, everything on the front that could all be fixed. That car could pro could. I'm not saying you're going to do it or should, but it probably could go down the strip again. At some point. Right. Um, you know, the thing is, is like, once you get it straight, you can always make another mold. Yeah. Um, it, it's Brian, if you have that picture, if somebody can bring the picture up of that car and share it. Yeah. Hold on just a second. I got it up already. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Lots of fiberglass guys out here. Surfboards. Yep. Do, do, boom. There you go. All right. Well, if you look at that, that almost looks like the wheel wells are exactly how they're supposed to be. Yeah. 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 But, you know, there's a lot of room around that, like I said, for the expansion of the tire. Yeah. So what would that width be? Because the inner 10 to the outside of that was... 29 inches so i mean would it be like a 24 inch tire yeah probably so they were probably running uh <clears throat> i don't know how big the back wheels would have been but i know like on a lot of the old pro stock cars they were running 15 by 14s on the pro stock cars and they were running like a 32 tall or 30 tall tire that was about yeah. roughly 15 or 16 inches of tread You'd have to look into 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 top fuel stuff because it's probably the same size tires on a top fuel dragster. I I do know the rear wing has been changed. It's been like if you look at that, it's been cut straight. But I mean, looking at other pictures, that wouldn't be hard to add. And you know, I hate saying this, but like the nose is so flimsy on it. Like I might have to take off the nose. Because there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to flip it outside without really breaking it. Unless yeah. I get, you know, figure something out. But um, actually from, like, the rear bumper's got some jacked up shit. That's that's not bad. But um, majority of the body is actually really solid except for that nose. See, and what's cool is, is 
you know that that pic and, and that picture that should be the same body you have right there, right? It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So you you know it's like it's like okay, how did this look? Oh, well, here's a picture of it I can find. You know. Yeah. I Man. imagine a, a good way to reinforce it fiberglass would be to get steel rod like round yeah. tube and run it, embrace everything in fiberglass that brought in there. Well, yeah, because you're not really worried about weight right now, you know? <laughs> so one of the things is, oh, sorry, Ken, I didn't see you drop out. Um, um, one of the things is like the, the fiber, like the metal supports that were in there, like some of it's still there, but like a lot of it's just broken off. So um, I have been randomly in touch with Kenny's son. So Kenny's son traveled with him all the time and he sent me some messages through Instagram and it's, I, I'm getting the feeling like he kind of wants to like give me advice, share this, share that, but he's just really reclusive about it just by yeah. what he's saying, you know, I look, I've done some fiberglass work fellas and I don't think it'd be too hard to graft in supports and, getting oh, the yeah. nose sturdy and then once you get it on the body you can make supports off the body to support it so like or the chassis or whatever it i don't think it'd be too hard no it shouldn't be too yeah, bad the thing I mean, is, you, gotta think, you gotta but... think you gotta think that you can't really support it off of the chassis because that whole thing lifts up yeah that's how you get in and out of it the it's handle's still up front the handle is all that's still up front but all the metal and stuff there's just bits and pieces of it it's like you, when you think don't there's somebody out there that has one of these bodies because that this was there is TV Tommy TV one. Tommy no TV Tommy Ivo had one and it's been restored and I really want to get a good look at that in person. Yeah, um, if you just get in there and look and see and take pictures of and yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Oh man, I'm like I said, all you'd have to do is go to one of go find a. Uh, 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 a race, you know, like somebody's bringing one of these cars to, like this nostalgic race this weekend. There's nostalgic races happening all over the country. So, from what I've, what we've gathered, there's been between four and six of these bodies made, and it sounds like TV Tommy Ivo had two of them. Norm had one, and there's another one. I don't remember the name, and the guy still has it. Um, well, who who made the body in the first place? Who was the manufacturer of that body? I don't know, but I might have an in for you with Tommy Ivo. Okay. If you do, let me know or just. I'll have to. So, Tommy Ivo really loved Buick Nailhead engines. Yeah. Like, obviously, with the showboat and shit like that, four engine nailhead dragster. Uh, the guys who do a lot of the work for him on his nailheads are out in California. They're called Centerville Auto Repair or Centerville Auto Salvage or something like that. And uh, they do the majority of all nail head speed parts. And I know Matt and Russ Martin on a decent level. I might be able to get a hold of them. Well, I know I can get a hold of them. But if I tell them what you're wanting to do, they might be able to relay us at least messages between us and Ivo. Yeah. And maybe get you a meeting to see his funny car wherever it is. That would be great because, That'd like, be cool, yeah. I, I like literally. I, I would love just to see it, get pictures, get dimensions. You know, like, you know, like if you and I were sitting there, any of us in this chat, hey, we need to do something with a '68 Charger. Well, there's a lot of those, and we have a lot of pictures, and we have a lot of knowledge on them. Mm -hmm. A fucking Cordoba funny car body. Yeah. Talk about a needle in a haystack. I mean, were there people? To die? Were there people even racing Cordoba? Do people even race Cordobas? So the story behind it, thinking. So the story behind this car is, you know, you're going into an era where there really wasn't performance, and this was the car, the Cordoba, the Super, the Charger was still being pushed as performance. So Norm always had to do something body wise of what he was selling to try to move cars. That's the only reason they well, had yeah, it. because the Charger looked the same way. And the first, what was it, 75, was it 75 Roadrunner? Yes. Was the only one that was built, uh, the, it was built on the Cordoba body style. 
and you know there the, there was a Daytona love, version of it too. Love, I would love to find a a, a big Roadrunner like that because that, that was the last year of the B Body Roadrunners. The Roadrunner had a cool design on the back. There was a yeah. Daytona version of the Charger, and um, I actually know where where one of those is at, Brian. One of the Daytona versions, but it is an absolute pile of fuck. Man, I'm surprised these tunnel rams for 426s are so cheap. You think they'd be way more than this, dude? You know how many 426 Hemi tunnel rams I have? How many? It's it's the oh. fact it's the same thing of like like you could find performance fit, use use performance pistons for them really cheap. Yeah. Right now the guys building Hemi's, they're not putting tunnel rams on them. They're building them to go into restorations. Yeah. yeah. So I they don't that want sense. that aftermarket stuff, and nobody else has the money to build a damn Hemi. So I do have Except a. I do. Like, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Who's got a? Does anybody have a vintage, three eighty three, tunnel ram? Oh yeah, I know. I need one too. <laughs> I need <It's>, one. <laughs> uh, I never let go of the one that was on Jezebel's four forty. I know it sounds funny. I use spacers. I bought a tunnel ram when i was born oh. mm. and <clears throat> when i got it, it was supposed to be for 440 and i got it here it was for a low deck i was like god dang it and that's when you could still buy those spacers real easily so we put spacers on it ed barber now has those spacers but uh it's a real early wind it's a three-piece tunnel ram nice. i've never let it go it's sitting in my parts room on display with two 953 barrels oh i don't blame you then there's a, yes. now there's a couple of them I've been seeing online, low deck tunnel rams, but they're single quad. So you what you would end up having to do is find another tunnel ram like the, the, the tall deck one and take the top off of it. Like mine, right. and take the top off of it and put on to that. Okay. To that. Deck Makes one. sense. Yeah. The guy that owns the machine shop I use had a charger like that one that was called the Paps Blue Ribbon Charger, and later it was called the Shamrock Shaker. Mike, are you from Northern Illinois? I'll just state for uh, everybody who wants a low deck tunnel ram. Uh, you spend four hundred bucks on just the dual quad variant. You're doing very well. Okay. okay. Good to know. Good to know. Well, what I paid for my five twenty one tunnel it's ram, like, it's like it's like small block, it's like small block tunnel okay. rams. They're they're hard to find. Yeah. Now right. that Mike, now that you say that, I I recognize the name of that car. If I remember, right, didn't the Paps Blue Ribbon Charger have at one point wasn't there like a seventy three seventy four Charger body based on that? I I remember that sounds really familiar. Brian, you use Bing. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? I use I use um okay. um Microsoft Edge. What used to be Windows. Yeah, I'm, I'm a boomer. I use the same shit. I I'm, I'm not going over to your little Firefox or whatever. Hey, uh, I Jeff. use Chrome. Yeah. Or Chrome. I found no. you. I found you a tunnel ram. 3 it came off a of 383. He wants 400 bucks for it. It's it's okay. a single. It's a single quad, but oh, it's only a dual quad. Well, like like Brian said, you just find a different top. Yeah, yeah. you could. Well, the the whole thing is it's going to end up costing you probably like four hundred or seven hundred bucks total, because you're going to find a uh, a four forty tunnel ram for three hundred or three fifty, and you're going to find that one for four hundred. But so then, I, mean, I, I want to do a vintage build for sure. So looking the next at question, this, you could make a, t a top for this pretty easily. No, I don't think so. You because it's all cast. That's the problem. Is it's cast, and to make it right, it's just a lot easier. Just Scott's to find got an awful well, order. Now, yeah, I'm gonna say I, yeah. So I'll say this. So in the hierarchy of intakes, tunnel ramps especially, often housers on the bottom. Are they? The it's the worst. Hmm. There's not a single big block Mopar or really even small block intake for Mopar's Offenhauser brand I would recommend or allow any of my customers to use. Their tunnel rams are all right. Like, they're still a tunnel ram. It's hard to fuck up a tunnel ram. Yeah. 
But as far as like uh, Hemi's and big block Chrysler's and stuff, and even small blocks, it goes Offie, Edelbrock, Wyand. Wyand, there's a reason why all the racers used Wyand tunnel rams and Wyand intakes. They were the best. Now, the Mopar M1 tunnel rams for like small block and big block Chrysler, they're, like say, this is Wyand. This is the Mopar stuff. It's right below it. You do some good port work to them, and they edge above it. <clears throat> like that one I sent you a picture of at that swap meet? Yeah. Um, that was a what really high. gives the Mopar stuff an edge on everything else is they're shorter. So it pushes the RPM range up, and it gives you more hood clearance. Yeah, but who who runs a tunnel ram, really, except for you? Who runs a tunnel ram looking for hood clearance? Screw hood clearance. I want it to stick way out of the hood. Shamrock shaker. Oh, here we go. I found I found you one, Jeff. I'll send it to you. And uh, and uh, hey, Mike, I put my um, email in the chat um, for heavens. But if 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 you get pictures of that, email them to me, man. I'd appreciate it. And by the way, Mike, I'm I'm taking a guess that you probably went to many races at Union Grove and saw the madness that took place with um, Broadway Bob. Yeah, this one is chrome, man. Looks pretty good, old. No, chrome. you're looking at the ones yeah. on Marketplace, aren't you, Ken? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, Brian and I've already looked at all those. Well, six hundred bucks is about is a little less than what Brian was saying, right? It's a what is it, Wyan? It's a yeah, it's a dual four dual quad like that one's chrome for deck, right? It's for a three eighty three four hundred. Okay, it's six, not terrible. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, yeah that, I found that one the other day and sent it to oh, you. It's, it's, it's powder bucks, coated you know? chrome, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which, which I don't think looks bad. I, I don't look that bad at all. It gives me diarrhea. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> not black, a, little, little I'm not a big. I'm not a I have never been super impressed with powder coating. I go to Byron at least a few times a year as well. Yeah, Byron. Yep. Another good place. You have one what for a nail head. They didn't make a tunnel ram for a nail head. There's very few intakes out there for nail heads. There's uh, uh, there's three deuces, dual quads. There's a 6-2, a 4-2, blower intakes. You definitely don't want any Offenhauser intake for a nail head. Those are literally junk. Nailhead's a pretty cool damn motor. Yeah. Well, what you guys with... think of that? What would what, you guys think of that that sixty four Buick in my last video? I dig it. That was That's at pretty... that. It was a fucking limo. I think it was a presidential limo. Is what I think it was. I love that car. Yeah, Dutch. We are up late. I'm gonna call it in about fifteen minutes because I have a machine shop date in the morning. But always go late, man. Um. Oh, hey, look at this, though. It is wind. So, yeah, he's got a good one, then. Ari, if you want to let go of that, uh, I have a junk-ass offy dual quad on my 322 nail head, and I want to wind for it because I don't want to spend $300 with Centerville to have them fix it because Avenazer didn't know how to make a fucking intake manifold. <laughs> I would love that intake if you want to sell it. Yeah, that would be that. What are you going to do with the nail head? I have that old uh, solid lifter cam race nail head in the side of my garage. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I've got a bell housing and the four speed and everything set up for someday. I'm going to do a hot rod or a rail or something like that. I don't know. I got so many engines and not enough room for the cars to put them in. I just like engines. Yeah, I do too. I'm kind of, I'm going to, I have a stash of some small blocks that I haven't seen in years and I'm thinking about go dig them out. And I got that 3 3 coming and maybe some other stuff. Wheeling and dealing, Jed. Wheeling and dealing. That best part is I'm not having to pay for stuff. It's just trading shit, so.
I'm scared to put in, uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. You'll just have to, you know, like instead of writing out dot, put a dot and at for an at symbol. Yeah. Oh shit. I didn't even spell that right. Sorry. Disregard that. I forgot to. I am trying to be professional. Nolan, I have a 364 and a 401. Love nail heads. It is such a neat motor. Oh, 364. Great engine. No availability for nothing for it. 401s are fantastic, and so are 425s. I just like the 322s because they're first of an era almost. 264 is technically the first. I think I'm going to become an AMC guy. Holy I shit. had an AMC, man. It was cool. I'm no, I'm I'm, I'm gonna be a true AMC only guy. I gotta, but then I gotta go to car shows, and anybody that walks up to my car, I gotta be ready to give them the entire history of the company. <laughs> hey, what you, about that? What about AMC that AMC the car show? The AMC dealer down south or whatever that's like still crumbling with a ton of cars. Yeah. Hey, man, javelins are are cool. <laughs> uh, Gremlins, there. The Gremlins were AMC. Oh, right? I'd, I'd love to have a Gremlin. I'd make uh, a Gremlin drag car with a with a, a small block Chrysler in it, real quick. What about the AMC that was the uh, had Levi's or the Lee Jean interior? That was a Gremlin. Um, yeah, that, that was, was a Gremlin. Uh, there was a Dodge truck. There was a Levi's edition Dodge truck too. Denim I tell you what's uh, cool. uh, you know the car the one car that AMC made that I think was absolutely hideously ugly but I would love to have one and just make a monster street tear is the Matador. Mm -hmm. I like Matadors, dude. I'm with you. Yeah, they they just had that look to it like yeah, cheesy but at the same time it's like yeah, we definitely need one of those. It had those big nice round headlights that Oh yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate it. it may help me track down a little bit of information. And um, Oh, Riker's got a buddy. He's got a Levi's Gremlin. You know, that. see, you know, maybe that's a good live. Where if we plan it out, the most eclectically oddball, cool cars, <laughs> and just talk about them. I think that'd be cool. You know, like one of the cars that I really, 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 really like uh, it's a Pontiac, the Can Am, the Nova style GTO. Yeah, I can't think of nothing. Javelins did have good looking front end. They did. When I got when I got my AMC, um, it came with a AMC Pro Stock. I had two of them, and the guy in there had a couple other ones that he wasn't going to get up, give up. But one of them, he had a real he had a true Mark Donahue Javelin. That's special. That's not yep. just a graphics package. That's a special block and everything else. Yep. And he knew it too. Like he was willing to give up the 68, 390 go pack car for cheap. Um, he was willing. And I, I got the pro stocker with it. Um, I should have kept that, but just wrong timing in life. Um, look, at, look, at, look, at, look at this car. Put, put that up there, Jeff. Okay. I'm kind of glad to be rid of my javelin. Yeah, cool like, javelin. yeah. No, not in the it, sense that it's a horrible car, but in the sense that it's uh, in a better place, being abused. Oh. I want one of those really bad. My buddy, my 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 buddy built that car. I know somebody who she drove one of those cars. That was her high school car. So what year no, is I, that? I, I like them. 79, 79. So that AMX. would have been that would have been that would have been competing against like Dutch guys cars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the problem and. the problem with that car is it had a little baby Dana in it and it had like two something gears in it. They were highway gears. Right. If you got that car out on the highway and just let it let it eat. Oh, I'm could, sure I mean, it, it had 85 miles per hour in it, but you could bury that, no problem. But I that car the right Osmond. there ran an 18-second quarter mile out of, <laughs> out of Gateway. <laughs> well, and I the mean, guy who had it just like, no, I'm not, and he just sold it. He didn't want to do any other work to it. I was like, I could get that car respectable because he hadn't tuned the engine or anything. It had a 304 in it. 
He had those super gears in it. And we put, I mean, those gears, and then we put taller tires on it. So I don't, I don't even want to know what the gear ratio was in that thing. But you know what's really messed up, though? That little car weighed 3,100 pounds. I could see that. I don't know what they had stuffed in there, but it was. That's fat for that car. Like, yeah, oh, geez. that's yeah. really fat. It's about the size of a Ford Escort. Yeah, that's heavy. What was the uh, Vega? Um, was it the Motion Vega? Cosworth Vega? There, no, yeah, Cosworth. Sorry, the Cosworth Vega. Yeah, yeah. you know yeah, that, that was, was kind of a movie. flop. I mean, they were cool though. Like they, they're they're neat little cars. I got a, I got a coupe out in the yard. That I need to do something with one day. No, I think Vegas are cool. Don't get me wrong, but that one just kind of fell on its face in a little bit. My I friend, would love to uh, have the Maverick. I want a Maverick. My friend wanted to build. He, he's he's a lot like Jed. He wanted to build a Vega as a cruiser. You know, he had a real fast race car. And he started, he, he, he put the engine together. And when he was telling me about what he was doing the engine, I'm like, you're going to fuck up and build a race car. Oh, no, this is just going to be a cruiser. I know you're going to fuck you're going to fuck around and accidentally build a race car. And that is exactly what he did. We he got that say, car together. Build a race car? Yeah, try you, finding, you already fucked up and built a race car. Try now finding parts. Another one. Try finding parts for the uh, first few years of the AMXs on some of those options. Like when I got mine. The, the only if you're gonna find parts, there was a guy in Texas named Eddie Stakes, and he had like everything, yep. but it was a premium, and you couldn't find shit on those. When you did, it was coin, and that was one of the bigger reasons that I decided not to keep it. That and you know, life with young kids. What's, um, what's real good around like around here in the St. Louis area has one of the biggest. AMC clubs in the country. Yeah. Oh, Big Richard's in the house. Welcome, the, Big Richard. The guy, her, her uncle, the guy who, uh, or uh, the girl I said you drove one of these as her high school car, her uncle has one that's a full-blown race car. It's <clears> tubbed <throat> and caged, and yeah. but he bought it brand new. And when he bought it brand new, that, that sticker on the hood, actually, let me... Let me see if I could do that. Let's see if I can get to that picture. If anybody Hopefully. in here has a Javelin and they want rear window louvers, I have a real original set that are aluminum. Oh, nice. Hey, yeah. Jed, did you get them, them heads you were going to bid on? Like, yeah. Did you win that auction? I did. It hurt. Look it at hurt. the interior. My ass is still bleeding off of those heads, actually. Oof. No yeah. love, huh? I love the interior of these cars. See, no, that, that, that looks see, pretty I good. Like that. That looks see, pretty that's good. what's so cool. Like, I mean, all of us are somewhat close-ish. We're we're not old, okay? And if you look like when we were kids, like a lot of these cars were still being driven around. And today's standards, they're just plain, but they're so freaking cool. Mm -hmm. I like that graphic on the hood. Yeah, I'm trying to find a good picture of it. Big Richard's just kind of chilling before there. bed. You can kind of see it there. Yes. Yeah, it's a cool little car. I don't know if I'd fit in it very well, but it's a cool little car. No, there's all kinds of room inside that car. Is there? Oh, yeah. 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 There you we put... go. There we go. There's oh, yeah. That's pretty it. cool. Brian, but, uh, so so would you, Nolan, I, have a good night, William, Nolan. And Ken fit comfortably and tall John. <laughs> no. But um, Ken and Tall over. John, Ken and Tall John would fit really, really comfortably in the front seats. The back seat was an afterthought on that car. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cars back then were. But um, when uh, when when her uncle bought his, the one that's his race car now, he told the dealership he ordered it because there was one out on the lot, and he said, "Okay, I want to order one of those." And they're like, "Well, he was ordered the exact same car that was out on the lot." He ordered it, and he specifically said, do not put that decal on that car. Uh, that Send it with the car, because because AMC always put them on crooked. Oh, Did really? wanted his to be perfect, yeah. <laughs> so, you, so, like, speaking of graphics and all that, do you guys remember the uh, early 90s Chevy's 454 SS trucks? Yeah. 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 So, 
a, a friend of mine in high school, like he graduated before I did, he had a pretty good job right in high school and he had one and and he had bought another one and it was like no miles on it and he paid a decent amount for it and he kept on saying, yeah, this guy's like telling me like, you know, it's got a bunch of stuff that was never put on, blah, blah, blah. So he, he, we pull out the paperwork. So, you know, like at Pace Trucks, there's always like four, five, six, seven, eight of them at the actual track. You know, like mm-hmm. one of a couple of them are improved to handle that they just have some on display. Yeah. So he actually bought off this guy one of the ones that was supposed to go on display and it never did. It went to a dealer and none of the graphics or nothing were installed. Huh. So he never did anything with that truck and just kept it nice. And man, that was his ticket later on in life. I'd like to do a real sleeper build, like a real, real deal sleeper street race car build. I have one of those. It's called my duster. No, your duster is not a sleeper by any means. It's totally a sleeper. No. If everything everything fits under the hood, it's a sleeper. Everything does for now. For now. Well, well. And no, because some cars just look fast. I want to get an extended cab square body Dakota and make that son of a bitch where it just rips. Uh, Jed, the whole plan is um, that's what I'm going to do with my dart. Sleeper street build. See, but that's the thing, though. Right now, if if anybody sees an old car like that, they're automatically going to think it's fast. Well, well yeah. not four doors. You don't look at a four door and be like, that car's fast. I don't know. I would nowadays. <laughs> I would too. That's the more suspicious. Yeah. Maybe one. the Cordoba. If somebody pulled up with a Cordoba or like uh, one of those big uh, Monte Carlos like that or the Thunderbirds like that. Yeah. You I might mean, not any think of those that's big- fast. No. You know, I mean, that's the, that, that's the whole cool part about it is like every – Things have been priced so out of range of most people. They're making anything and everything fast. True. Now, here, here's oh. something I got to touch on this. Ken, you said anything's a sleeper if it fits under the hood, right? Yes. Duster's still a sleeper with the tunnel rim because it's got a giant fucking scoop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm at the hood line, but like, okay, you got me. Um, <laughs> Dutch guy, my opinion on the 78 and 79 Magnums, I think they're cool. I think that era of cars, like the Malays going in the late 70s, early 80s, I still think a lot of that stuff is actually pretty neat. I you know, for the Magnum, longest time. When it blacked out. Yeah. That, I yeah. like the Maradas. Oh, yeah. Ooh, one of, those, one of those New Yorkers, that would make one hell of a sleeper, wouldn't it? If you left the factory interior, you know, you know the front seat that looked like a couch. Yep. <laughs> So, have you seen that? Uh, I don't know what channel, big name channel was it, but they built this just monster Cadillac into just a beast, right? And it's like someone needs to do that with a C body, but keep it sleeper. That would be cool. I like the C bodies. I've always liked them. Seventy, the three hundred H, the Hearst edition. Chrysler. Oh, dude, yeah. the the sixty nine up three hundred, dude. They just look, they look angry. They, they look just so look mean. like, you know what they look like? The guy that's 40 some years old that bought, has money, bought that car brand new, that still wants to have fun, has a family, but he still wants to bang his mistress, mistress somewhere. He's got all the room in the back. <laughs> that's <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, a T-top Marat. Oh, that'd be so cool. Oh, a T-top I love Marat. those cars with T-tops. Don't you be tempting Brian to spend his money. I'm watching. One project at a time, Brian. One project at a time. Well, no, it's going to, right now it's one project, but after No Name Nationals, I got to have at least two. Yeah. Hundred. I'm going to have two in the shop I'm working on. Well, you got to get the car for next year started, you know? So, well, yeah. I'm not, I am not, I know, because the duster is going to stay together just because I am not doing this again. I'm not, I'm not getting, putting myself on a timeline again. There's nothing fun about it other than it's motivation, but God, it's, it makes it. I mean, enjoyable. I don't think I don't, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not to the point where I'm like, Oh, I'm not going to make it, but it's just, I don't want to be on a timeline again. 
I'd well, rather be able yeah, to just do I, stuff I hear you. as I do I it. Hear you. Timeline suck. I still have plenty of time, but it's not like I just uh, I don't like it. I probably won't make it because there's no way I can put 500 or another 400 miles on Jezebel in time if I want to bring it. So I'll, I'll probably bring a scooter, an electric mobile scooter or something. <laughs> bring just a steal a Walmart car. scooter. There we go. Just, just buy, steal those Walmart scooters and paint it like Jezebel. <laughs> just get it like a little decal and put it on the side of it. Yeah, I brought, I brought Jezebel. Jezebel. <laughs> That's my problem, though. I mean, any project I get, I'm like, I'm like, uh, well, I'm just, I, I, you know, like, like Jed, you got the yard dart. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night unless I had a plan to make that thing fast. And yeah. it's that's just not what that car's being built for, you know. I mean, I have a plan for it. No, yeah, you have a plan for it, but you're not going to make it fast, fast, you know. You're, you're no, the body's not going to handle it. Yeah, that car is too unsound structurally because of. Oh, it'll be <laughs> fine. It will Just be fine. Send it. Just put a cage it. in it. He'll stiffen it up some. Go. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I am going to call it an evening because I have to be up very early and go do things and hopefully not burn my garage down and absolute being pissed off. Oh, you're going to step for another two hours. Don't lie. No, I, no. I'm actually going to go to bed early. <laughs> I This is early for me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. I've still got. I've still got, I've still got another. Out. Normally, if I would have taken off today because it's my birthday, happy birthday to me! I'm 49 birthday, years old. Brian. I'm an old son of a bitch. But uh, right now, I'd still have another 45 minutes at work. Jeez, what's your Good what's your hours? Jeff. I work from uh, what is it, 2:15 to to 12:45. Oh, so I work 10 hours a day, four days a week. Jeff, you I just like remember, her. you can lie to us, but you can't lie to yourself. About what? Oh, about him going to bed? Yeah, he's not yeah. going to go to bed. Yeah. He ain't going to bed. Man, don't sleep. <sighs> I know. Yeah, like, I, I'm i going to probably research shit now because, like, god damn it. I ain't, yeah. You know what the funny thing is? Is, like, I'm making a video about just doing some car art stuff, right? And in there, like, I can just tell when I'm looking, I'm like, and I literally woke up, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go to bed. And I'm like, nope. And it's like three o'clock in the morning. And it's like, I actually have to be at work instead of being at home and like not too many hours away. Yeah, but we, we just got that whole thing of uh, fixing that body put back into your head. So now you're going to research that for three or four it's hours. exactly going to research because Mopar Mike sent me some <laughs> pictures. And I'm going to go look at that and be like, oh, yeah. And I'm going to uh, crawl underneath there and be like, oh. Uh huh. <laughs> so this is why I don't shut my lives down. It's like, ah, what the hell? Usually, if if you look at my lives, okay, what are we about three and a half hours in? That's yeah. usually yes. that's usually when I get up and everybody's talking, and I get up and start walking around the car and be like, okay, and doing little stuff. You know, like on that last live, I got the door all put together and everything, just while everybody else was talking, and I could still talk. I wish I could do this at my garage. You but, could. Uh, I'd have to do it on my phone. Mm. They oh, make God. little. Uh, they 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 make these things that'll boost your Wi-Fi signal from one to another. They do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, like if I, if I turn Wi-Fi off on my phone, the video is just good enough. If I try to Wi-Fi out there, it's awful. Yeah. Run you a really long Ethernet cable out there. You could do honestly. You could do that too. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make a. I, I wouldn't have a second thought about it. I'd have one. And you run it right out the kitchen window. Zoom straight out to there to your laptop because you still got your laptop and just. Yeah. <laughs> Remember my laptop's webcam. You know that laptop is from 2012. And yes, it's an Alienware, but that that webcam is pretty awful. I can't even Ooh, stream fancy. pictures of my wiener. <laughs> well, if you well, can't, it doesn't have that kind of zoom no. on it. <laughs> that was That's good. Fair. That was I'm good. Just that, you're on the ball on that one. That was, that was sharp. I'm just saying, if if I had my wiener up and this pen, you wouldn't be able to tell which one's which. I mean, okay, this pen. <laughs> I don't know. Have a good I night. Just... Have a good night, Richard. 
I think you ought to, I think I, I think we need a live comparison right now on Jeff's on Jeff's live. Okay. No, we don't need that. <laughs> Where'd Jeff channel go? Well, oh wow. <laughs> yeah. you mean like that that picture of my dong in Discord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that would get that. See, but that's the same thing, though. That picture would be just as bad in in, in the eyes of YouTube. Well, yeah, I can't, I can't show that because YouTube has anti, has very, very naughty rules about those kinds of things. YouTube, hey, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Bezos, or yeah. no, not Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, you, come save us! You just had a run in with YouTube, like yes, I did. They yanked one of my fo- my uh, videos and um, gave me a copyright strike over Oops. a commercial. There we go. I put in my uh, video. My dog. <laughs> But yeah, they uh, well, didn't didn't I heard I, I I wasn't around to see it, but didn't Ruben have a problem with that in one of his lives here recently? He, they he took did. His it, it, down. Was, it was music in the background. This was a 1968 Ford Thunderbird commercial that I threw in a video, just as a kind of like joking around of like having a concession stand break, and I didn't get like copyright claim. It was bam, it's gone, and like. I never knew this, but there's like a copyright school. If you get a strike, you know, you uh, do this copyright class and then like 90 days, they can take it down. But if you get three, they'll disable your channel. It's like, what the fuck, people? The community strikes. Now, I know, I know, I know the community strikes. You can lose your channel by getting three and those things never go away. No you, can, you know, they, they do after 90 days if you take this class, which is three questions in a two minute. The community video. ones or the copyright ones? Community oh. guideline strikes are bad. Oh, yeah. I've never gotten one of those. But, no. um, Ken, I did look up. That should have been um, – that should not have been uh, a copyright thing. Somehow this guy's claiming that he owns the rights to that, that video. Yeah, I don't, th- I don't see how he can own a Ford TV commercial like – I don't either. You think either Ford would own it or the thing like, is, is, is it right now is it a dealership commercial? No, it's just a Ford commercial <laughs> for the 1968 Thunderbird. Okay, I was gonna say if it was like a dealership commercial, I could see like the dealership owned the rights to it. But Ford the thing is, right now there's a lot of foreign companies that have bought up a bunch of stuff. I've noticed that they're buying and up they're, the rights to all these and, videos and stuff. It's not just buying up the rights of videos. They're also just just he really put that up, Jeff. What's that? You put that up. Oh, sorry. If, if you don't just know go back. stuff, you won't know what that is. I, I know what that is. is. I just clicked it through here. So, um, the because uh, I think it happened to Uncle oh, Tony. He had one of his, they they talked about something on one of his lives. I can, and he never said what they were talking about, but they, he talked. They talked about something on one of his lives, and he got a copyright strike from it. Which it's I don't understand. Weird. That. How can so, you get a copyright strike just by talking about something? This guy, this guy isn't foreign. Like I did some research on the name because they gave me his name, not his channel. They gave me his fucking name, right? Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell? And I looked him up, and like, he is a automotive collector of like everything and like he had participated in some big races back in the day and you know it's like holy shit like that's insane and it wasn't like just a claim it was bam you know i it was like i was watching my uh uh analytics and i'm like man that was actually a good video i'm surprised to get more views and i went in my email and it's like this has been removed and it's like holy shit and the first thing i did because i never go on my laptop to go to YouTube, except if I'm doing a live and I clicked on my channel to, you know, schedule a live. And the first thing that popped up was this screen about it. And it's like, Oh my God. Yeah. I've, I've been finding a way of getting around, uh, like audio copyright strikes for music. If you just overlay two songs over top of each other, one company can't claim it. Cause it's not just their song anymore. <laughs> Well, now I think in in like in in with shorts you could use any any music you want. Yeah, yeah, it's always in that library. Care. Yeah. No, I thought you could use any music you wanted on shorts because you're not actually making money off of them. There's no well, fifteen seconds. So fifteen to twenty seconds of a music clip is 
I believe considered open, but like you can do a 60 second short. And from there, I think it's gotta be different. Oh, cause I thought, cause I know, well, I know TikTok. they use songs from everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Cause and if you go a, to, there's a lot of people in, just moving their whole TikTok library over to, uh, over to YouTube. Yeah. There's a lot of people doing stuff with Instagram on that too. Which, I mean, I could understand the shorts because the shorts don't make it. It's not making me any money. So it's not, it wouldn't make the, the person who owns the copyright to that, that music any money either. So you should be able to just whatever. You, you know, it's too yeah. bad that you couldn't make a video and then in your details of the video, just check a box and say, don't want monetization. So that you used way. You to be able to do that, didn't you, Jed? What? Jed, didn't you used to be able to click, no, I don't want this monetized, and you can use any <laughs> fucking music you wanted? <laughs> They're from fans, though. <laughs> oh, I'm just leaving that one up there. No. <laughs> I saw seen... that one come through. I'm like, I have to. If we see neon lights at the at the base of Jed's or uh, Jeff's pants, we know he's he's got one of those those LED ones. Hey, I can neither confirm nor deny that after I get my car done and have more time, that I'm going to create another channel based upon my characters <laughs> that I've created in my head. <laughs> like seriously, like I already you got have... more energy and and and. Did I ever tell you about that? A friend of mine when he was in college, when a friend of mine was in college and he was doing like film stuff, like some of the classes he did was like actually like acting, but it was like sketch comedy and they had to write stuff. And this guy has the creativity of like a thumbtack. So I would write these, the shit for him. Right. And it was always over the top. Like he couldn't do it. And I would just have all these characters and I would come up with the costumes and I would do it for him. He's like, no, you can't do that. You fucking cannot do that. Like a British TV chef. Right, and his name was Throbert Hot Dickens. <laughs> so when the so so when the uh, you know audience is like, "Oh, cook me some muffins," it's like, "No, you're just getting the sausage," you know. And there was another one that was like uh, cowboy shit show. Uh, he's he was a, a a drunken like redneck mechanic. Um, there was an artist from Italy, but he was like absolute like trash over in Italy, but came over here and was like very successful, but he was just trying to get laid. And his name was Levi Stefano Dolly LSD. Mm -hmm. It was, a, it was there, but that one got used cause nobody got the name until like at the end of it. And it, they, I was, I was seriously thinking about like, you know, in the off season in the winter time, just doing a video game channel. It'd be fun because I mean, goddamn, Chad, how much time did we spend playing seven days to die this winter? <laughs> when, when neither one of us could do anything because it was so goddamn cold and shit out there. I, like, I have 156 yeah. hours logged playing with you. Jesus <laughs> Christ. You got Jed playing Seven Days to Die, too? I've got, Man. I've got, I have 500 hours in that game. I got a lot in that game. Now, <laughs> if you want to talk about a different game um, that I wanted to try to get Jed to play, uh, what is it? Um, uh, Conan Exiles? Oh yeah, I've heard you that just, game. You just okay, want no, me to Jet. play that game because you know I'll run around naked with a giant wolf. So <laughs> I was literally just gonna say you can you got a, a, a Wang slider in that game. You can like uh, Wang slider. All I have. Kinds of I bought that game before it was released. I was in, yeah. I was in uh, before Alpha that Beta. game. I have I have fifteen hundred hours in that game. Jeez. That's insane. But that was back before I was before I had you know was serious in the car stuff too, and that's all I did was play video games. Yeah, no, I, I feel yeah. I used to be heavy into the video games, but yeah. I've but it's really like right now, I ain't got time to play shit. I got I got you a race car to build. Supposed to go play games. Yeah, I know, but I fell asleep. We could still do that. Yeah, we could. I just got to pull. You guys go play games. I'm going to, I have stuff to do instead of sleeping now. <laughs> uh -huh, Jeff. Uh, All right. We'll see you later, Jeff. Yeah. Gentlemen. See you later, fellas. Thanks for joining. Peace out. Bye-bye.